Manawa mai e te putanga o matariki, manawa mai e te areki o te rangi, manawa mai e te mātahi o te tau. Papaki ana ngā tai o haumihi te whanganui ātara kia koutou katoa e mātaki taki ana i o koutou kāinga. Greetings and welcome to our capital city of Wellington for our special Matariki broadcast. No mai. Haere mai. Welcome to our celebrations for our very own new year, Te Tauhou Māori. Welcome to this historic broadcast on this very historic and special day. I'm Stacey Morrison. Kia ora tiwi. I'm Matai Smith. Thank you for joining us from wherever you might be via the many platforms that have banded together so we can all learn, celebrate and indeed engage in the meaning of Matariki for us all, Manua Te Ao Matariki. Happy Māori New Year. And we are coming to you live from Te Papa Tongarewa, the Museum of New Zealand. And right now, as you can see in these shots we're about to show you, we're looking down from the stars across our capital city, Wellington, Te Whanganui Atara. Yes, indeed. That is us down there with the bright lights preparing our beautiful Matariki ceremony for our very special guests, which includes you, wherever you are tuning in from. Today is all about sharing, sharing mātauranga, ancient knowledge and culture, sharing kai, and also sharing the aroha, because this is a day for all New Zealanders. Now, throughout the morning, we'll be bringing you beautiful waiata, haka, and fantastic kōrero from some very switched-on astronomers. But first, let's bring you right up to date on what Matariki is all about. If we choose to connect with the stars, the stars can help connect us. Now that Matariki is officially a national holiday, it's important to understand that it's for all of us to celebrate. So what is Matariki? Why is it significant? And how can we all celebrate it? When I think about the new year, the thing that connects us to the rest of the world is it's the signal to tell us it's now time to recalibrate, to refresh. Matariki is one out of the many things people don't know about Te Ao Māori. Celebrating Matariki as a national holiday excites me. This is a positive outlook and pathway we can go into learning more. So what is Matariki? Or who is Matariki? Matariki is a star cluster that rises in midwinter. Because of the season change and their deep connection to the environment, many Māori saw the rising of Matariki as a sign of the new year. So where is Matariki? The best time to see the star cluster is just before sunrise. In Aotearoa, Matariki is northeast. First look east to the line of three stars that make up Orion's belt, or Tautoru. Then, follow the direction of Tautoru to the left until you see a tiny cluster of stars. This is Matariki. Matariki can be seen from all around the world. The Middle East, Asia, Australia, Europe, North and South America. Different cultures have their own names and stories attached to the cluster. Across Europe, Matariki is known as Pleiades. Some refer to them as the Seven Sisters. Some associate Matariki with death and mourning while some connect the stars to agriculture. In Japan, Matariki is known as Subaru, which means gathering together. Many people around the world have been guided by stars, from astrology to ocean navigation and measuring time. Since ancient times, people have looked to stars as signs to connect them with events here on Earth. Christians believe the Star of Bethlehem was a miraculous sign to mark the birth of Christ. The Bible says, There will be signs in the sun, moon and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. Many cultures believed that the positions of the stars were their creator's way of telling stories. 
so it seemed only natural to recognize patterns in the sky, give them names, and tell stories about them. So what's our story here in Aotearoa? The word matariki is often referred to as the eyes of God. Mata meaning eyes and ariki meaning God. Many Māori believe when they pass on, our spirits ascend to the sky and we become stars. Some consider Matariki to be the mother star surrounded by her children. Some say she has six children. Some say she has eight. Each star is connected to our environment. Waiti and Waita are the stars watching over our water and all the kind that live within it. One for the fresh water like our rivers and lakes, and the other for our oceans. Tupu Anuku and Tupu Arangi look after our kai that grow below and above the land, our veggie gardens and all that live within our trees and the sky. Waipunarangi and Ururangi are the weather stars, guardians of the rain and wind. And the final two stars are our protectors, Pohutsukawa and Hiwaiterangi. One protects the memories of our loved ones who have passed away, while the other protects our wishes. This is the Matariki Fano. If Matariki has such a long history, why are a lot of us only learning about Matariki now? The reason why people uh, don't know much about it is simply because when you've got different symbols around the country recognising and remembering a dying race that encourages us to be embarrassed of who we are and our culture. And as a result of that, you lose knowledge. I was raised in the 80s when there was a slow revival of the culture. It's taken a good 40 years of renaissance just to get here. And all of the hard work of the last 40 years has enabled us to start to be proud again. Hede Nui Matariki rises in midwinter, a time of seasonal change. It's cold, so the land is at its most unproductive and the harvest season must end. What more does this star cluster tell us at this time of year? Traditionally, all of our new years were in winter because the, the moment that things get warm, we're then moving into work. And so summer is our biggest time to work because you go out and get all of the food that you need to get while you then rest in the winter. You stay home during the winter, you go all around the world, 
all the big battles around the world, very rarely were they in winter, and if they were, the people who went to attack would often lose. You don't hear any stories of our tūpuna going into big battles in winter simply because it makes sense to stay home. Ngāti Rangi have come home to learn about ancient traditions and how they can celebrate their new year. Winter is a time for scholarship. It's a time to stay together, to reflect, to wānanga. I live a long way away from home, and it's, it's hard sometimes being away, but coming home is really grounding. It's just a really warm home feeling. And I know that when I have a baby and they're brought up here, they're like, this is the Māori New Year. This is, it's normalised, you know, we don't have to fight for it or we don't have to explain our own culture. It's just a part of this land now, as it should have been from the beginning. Māori would look to the stars to predict the upcoming year's harvest. If the stars in the cluster are clear and bright, it would be a warm and bountiful season. However, if Matariki appeared hazy, this would be a sign of a cold and difficult season. Or if certain stars were shining brighter than others, like if Tupuanuku was shining the brightest, then you'd know that you would have a successful Kumara harvest. There's a lot of revival happening right now of old knowledge. Traditionally, each season had a reason. Our culture's a food culture. That's just an aspect of humanity, is the importance of food. Autumn was preparation for the cold months. Winter was all about wānanga. Then you go into spring, and that then tells you, start to prepare your garden for the kumara. I've been doing a bit of work with somebody who works um, for the Met Service, and so just aligning, oh, this is what I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be a cold winter, and it's going to be short. And she goes, how do you know? And I says, oh, well, I was just reading the stars and what the stars were telling me. And that just gives me a really good read on what's going to happen for the next season as well as for the next year. But we all see different stars depending on where we live. All around the world, the landscape is different. The conditions are different. So naturally, you adapt to your conditions. The same applies here around Aotearoa, Every tribe is surrounded by a different environment. So every tribe has different traditions. Not all tribes see Matariki as a sign of the new year. This may be because in their environment, they can't see Matariki and other stars are more prominent. Puanga, also known as Rigel, is a star that many Māori see as a sign of the new year. It's higher and much brighter than Matariki, and it rises around the same time too. Puanga is celebrated all around Aotearoa, but mainly on the west coast, far north, parts of the South Island and the Chathams. Some signs were read differently, but most tribes knew of both Matariki and Puanga. Some people say, oh no, we're Puanga, oh no, we're Matariki. What's really important from my perspective is there's no competition. You read whatever you read, depending on where you are. Puanga is a, a key star for us of the west coast coming into the central volcanoes. And she's important simply because we get a better read from her than we do from Matariki. Traditionally, in the mountain here, to prepare for the cold months, we would go down to the Whanganui River where it's slightly warmer. And so because we were down the river, you can't see Matariki and you can only see Puanga. Traditionally, Māori New Year celebrations included ritual fires, offerings, farewelling the dead, celebrating life and preparing for the future. Ngāti Rangi have revived their traditional New Year's celebration.
Ia tau, ka piki atu mātou, ki te maunga ki te karakia. Kā tai, ka unuku atu, ka tauna te ai. Ka waka ua i ngā ingoa o te unga koamate, ka tukuna atu ki te marea. Rana, Virginia, Marekura, ki me tūne re pōpē of Robert Gray, Joe Hawke, Moana Jackson, ki reira tūne. Tuku atu ai, kia tākiri atu ai ue tu i te rangi. Um, I lost my mum a while ago. And it's uh, time to celebrate who they are through who we are and to let go, but to still remember. Because if you don't talk about them, you lose them. And that's what the fire, and that's about. And that's why when we reflect on Waiata and Karakia, you feel their presence in it. I'm not normally a spiritual person, but I have never really experienced anything like that. It was something really special, I'll, something I'll definitely never forget. This is my first time being on a marae. I feel extremely privileged. It's so much more than reading about it in a book or on a website. As a scientist, Western science has a lot to learn from Indigenous knowledge. A lot of this knowledge has been here for a long time. It's just maybe been slightly ignored by Western science. You know, and coming from science and as a Westerner, that's, you know, I think that's quite significant. Kuanga is a part of our journey. It's a part of a new beginning. Matariki allows us to share who we are, our stories, from our point of view. We're telling our story, not someone else telling it for us. Us here in Aotearoa typically associate New Year's celebrations with toasting glasses, parties, countdowns and fireworks. But have we ever really stopped to ask why we celebrate this way? Or do we just accept the fact that this is the way we've always done it? And when did we stop knowing the meaning behind these traditional celebrations? Over the past couple of decades, Matariki celebrations have been revived as a time of remembrance, joy and peace. So how can we celebrate Matariki today? Matariki allows me to grieve my past, to set intentions for what is to come, and to acknowledge my surroundings of Te Ao Māori. I went to Awananga, the way they spoke about star navigation, that really sparked my love for Matariki and how to incorporate it through my lifestyle. From that day forward, it was like the best, it was better than the Beyonce concert, like it was amazing. Um, and I was looking around in the room and I was like, why am I the only young person here? Traditionally, Māori needed to observe and understand their environment for survival. Atupuna. They relied on matariki as signs of how to get their kai. My dream is for kids to walk outside and understand the natural notifications in our environment. And understanding that, you can know so much more about yourself. I'm not an expert, but I'm just a messenger stick to my peers on the cool as things we have in Te Ao Māori. Hana is trying to modernise Māori traditions to help her generation to understand how the lunar phases can affect our behaviour. We're all just teenagers trying to find our way in life in this 21st century and it can get a bit emotionally high and emotionally low. And I was just trying to help them navigate through those different cycles from a Māori perspective. I created one of these resources to understand maramataka, 
which is the Māori Lunar Calendar, and hope to help them navigate through their mental well-being, their spiritual well-being, and their physical well-being according to the Maramataka phases. For instance, one of our moon phases is Rākau Nui, and in this flip chart book, we've got our moon is full, a great time to outgrow comfortable places. Matariki is not just a Māori thing. A lot of different cultures celebrate Matariki in their own way, in their own tikanga. My uncle and auntie were the initiators to start celebrating Matariki a few years back. And our first Matariki we had was literally just roasting marshmallows by the fire and we were talking about different variations of matariki. The wairua of that night, you can't compare it and I can't explain it. It's just very special, very warming, and that's what matariki is about. So to me, in my eyes, if you can have your family together, if you can have really nice kai and a celebration of our whakapapa and hitori, that's matariki to me. To be honest, I don't really know that much about Matariki. I'm half Tongan, half Scottish. I feel like everyone should learn about Matariki, you know? Because it's like part of New Zealand, get um, a better understanding about it, not just like learning it, but understanding it fully, yeah. <laughs> Does anyone have any knowledge or understanding around Matariki? There's one interpretation that Tafari Matia, who is the god of wind, took out his eyes because of the love of his parents, and his eyes were scattered across the sky, which created Matariki. Matariki being a um, public holiday now is just a way of revitalizing um, not only the reo, but just the customs, the tikanga, and um, all of that, and not only just for Māori, but for those who aren't Māori who live in New Zealand, and just to kind of make them aware of um, just like the culture as well as the people of the land, so yeah. Does anyone have any idea of how they can celebrate Matariki? Yes. Yeah? You can celebrate it by eating some food? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> One form of celebrating Matariki, or a traditional way, is called a hautapu. Hautapu, in one sense, is Throughout the year, you're carrying like an invisible bag. And throughout that year, you're filling it up with baggage. Knowledge, experience, negative, positive. By the time you get to Matariki, it's so heavy. <laughs> it's weighing you down. So Haitapu allows you to empty your baggage out and you're ready to start your new year, okay? My favorite memory with my grandfather was uh, how do I put this last? He was quite a big fella. And um, I think the one thing that I used to like was just like, I mean, you see him, just give him like the good old hug. Like, since he's like big fella, it was just like, felt real embracing. Yeah. So, probably one of my favourite memory of um, my, me and my grandfather. In terms of sitting with my beliefs, it doesn't really correlate. But that's fine, you know, you, you can always learn new things. So how we celebrate a hautapu is we'd open the space with the karakia. And then we acknowledge by saying the names of people that have passed away in that year. And then we karakia to the different fitu or stars. And in this instance, we will place down an offering that is associated with each star. And so we would place these on our bonfire, right? And the steam from here going up there and saying thank you to the stars for guiding us for the year. And then we karakia, we set our intentions, goals and aspirations to hiwai te rangi. Matariki is a time to let everything go, to stop and reflect on the last year that you've had, all of the ups, all of the downs, and just let everything go and acknowledge everything so that you can fill in even more life experience in the next year.
Matariki can help bring our country together so that we can enjoy the best of both worlds. Matariki is important to Te Papa because at the heart of it, it recognises the deep mana, vitality, integrity of Matariki Māori, our indigenous knowledge traditions. I remember not long after Te Papa Tongariwa opened in February 1998, our first iwi in residence was Te Atiawa Taranaki Whanui and the late Tūru Wharehoka. He shared his kōrero and, and his knowledge pertaining to Puanga in the dawning of the Māori New Year. And, uh, it made us think about the significance of, of, uh, of Matariki and consequently uh, took a paper and a, and a kaupapa to our leadership team about why we should be celebrating and acknowledging it. Cliff Whiting, our first kaihautu, it resonated straight away. And over the next two years, we made a commitment uh, that we would celebrate Matariki every year. We've had 24 years of eight different iwi and this um, diversity and perspective of Matariki, Puanga, Maramataka Māori and gathering all of that together, which is sort of eventuated in our digital platform and all the information that we share on our website, Mana Whenua. They're always so generous in letting our iwi exhibition partners from across the mutu share their mātauranga at that time. A highlight for me is the growth that has occurred over the last 20 years. So from when we first started celebrating Matariki at Te Papa, you know, it started as a really small occasion amongst staff and it's grown into this huge program. We've really learned what's worked well, what hasn't worked, and expanding on our learning as kaimahi, but also for our audiences that come into Te Papa. A kaupapa which has been really close to my heart has been the Taikura Kaumatua Kapahaka and uh, we've celebrated that for well over 10 years. The nannies and kuros, so beautiful, really wholesome, and it's just awesome to give them the value that they deserve. That's definitely a Matariki highlight. This is the first time that we've had a physical experience or exhibition for our visitors at Te Papa. Of course, over the years, there's been many learning programs for schools in Kura, many public programs and events, but this is the first time, you know, we're marking it with a physical experience. I think this exhibition is particularly uh, important because it's representing the first Indigenous holiday for Aotearoa. It's the first time that, you know, Aotearoa will be pausing for Matauranga Māori and being the National Museum of Aotearoa, it's, it was important to us as an organisation to have something on the floor for our visitors to experience, uh, to help them understand how we should be celebrating this public holiday. My hopes for Te Papa is that now that we've reached this milestone of Matariki being a public holiday, that we can expand on that and um, look at the Maramataka Māori as a whole. And I think it's just care, sort of trying to keep the momentum up, make sure that we continue to uplift the kaupapa any way we can. I hope that Matariki is taken into every whānau, into every family in Aotearoa. And it's a way that we can understand the history of where we've come from, but just as importantly, as we care for, caring for the future, is actually honouring and respecting our whenua, our histories throughout Aotearoa and Rekohu. We know my hooky my welcome back to our very special broadcast celebrating Matariki across many different platforms, working together to share what Matariki can mean to us all. 
the first time that a Māori cultural event seated in the ancient practice of mātai fetu or stargazing has been honoured with a public holiday. It's a time to reflect, to celebrate and indeed to reset. This morning here and right across the motu, we're celebrating Matariki, the Māori New Year. So, manawatia a Matariki. Happy Māori New Year to all New Zealanders wherever you are. We're all making history and coming together for our new holiday for our ancient tradition of observing Matariki. Kia ora, I'm Matai Smith and we're live in the beautiful marae, Rungo Marae Roa at Te Papatonga Rewa, the Museum of New Zealand on the waterfront in Te Whanganui Atara, Wellington. This is a special day for all New Zealanders. Tēnā koutou, I'm Stacey Morrison. And the dawning of this new day also welcomes a new dawn for us all. Very soon, we'll experience the Whāngai i Te Hautapu ceremony in a way never captured in a live broadcast before. What you'll experience are incantations of hope, gratitude, and they'll also be hangi, which I can Yum. smell, and it's all part of what Matariki can offer us all. But hey, if you're still in your moinga with a cup of tea and wheat bix, don't worry, you two are on the right track for a great day. Manawa tia a Matariki, celebrate Matariki. It's an invitation to all of Aotearoa to understand both the old traditions and to be part of creating new ones of our own. For those of us who are new to the concepts and the kaupapa of Matariki, they're universal mm. and they're very meaningful. So basically it's a time to reflect, to celebrate the present and to reset for the future. First, we reflect by remembering those we have lost and acknowledging our own journey over the last year. We celebrate by reconnecting with Fano, good friends and enjoying good kai. And we reset. We prepare for the year ahead with a focus on well-being and life balance. And music plays a big part in our togetherness, and so this morning we'll be enjoying live performances from our star performers all on the rise. Who are we talking here, Mate? Macy Reka, Seth Harpu, Louis Baker, Creative Natives, and the Tuari Brothers singing our praises for Matariki. So let's have a look at what else is coming up. Very soon we'll be included in the sacred practice of Te Whāngai i Te Hautapu ceremony, led by Ruanuku, experts from all around the country. At 7.30, the first of our three panel discussions with Julian Wilcox, Mataya Kepa, Annabelle Lee Mather and Lillian Hanley. And after 8 o'clock, we have the Matariki address from the Prime Minister, Jacinda Ardern. At 8.30, the second of our three panels, which is hosted by Moana Mania Poto, with guests Dame Hinewehi Mohi, Hana Rafetsi Maipi Clark, and Andre Afangamasia. At 9 o'clock, live music. Then at 9.30, the third of our Masariki panels, when John Campbell is joined by Dr. Hardy Williams, Professor Rangi Tamwa, and Ainga Lafili Fepulai Tapuai. And that's followed at 10 o'clock by the documentary Matariki Explained and at 10.30 more beautiful waiata including Maisirika. But now we cross live to Te Pai Tirohanga for our hautapu ceremony to be led by Professor Sir William Terangiua Pau Te Mara. Kia whakawhiti atu tātou. Tidotu <laughs> で、無地のまとくてのまらぎ
ごめんなさい、ごめんなさい、ごめんなさい、ごめんなさい、ごめんなさい、ごめんなさい、ごめんなさい、ごめんなさい、ごめんなさい、ごめんなさい、ごめんなさい、ごめんなさい、ごめん
Takurua vare ana, takurua parawai, takurua ai o pūtau. Takurua ngana, takurua auru, takurua ruru, takurua upoko pāpā. Nau mai te anu o takurua, i ngā pōtū tanganui o pīpini, nau mai, nau mai. Hai re rā e te tau Māori kua hipa, e mai e ngā kaupeka a te tau. E mai koi a hāno, hāno, hara mai te toki a ta huakirangi. Hau pire, hui e! Hai pire! Mai e, mai e, mai e! Mai e, pōhutu kaua, mai e, taramai nuku, mai e, te wakarangi, mai e, ngā mate o te tau Māori. Ko tō, kua maua kera ki te kupenga taramai nuku. Ko tō, kua iria kera ki te hawa rua. Ki kona ko tōtu mai ai. Ngoa ko takinara ko te kawa. Ngoa ko te kawa e whetu urangi. Ngoa ko tō ko riro atu ki te pā uri uri ki te pā tango tango. Ngoa ko tō rā ngā mate o te tau Māori. Ngoa ko tō rā e whakara ngā mai rā. Ngoa i hawa rā ko tō ki te kupenga nui. Ngoa i nga ti a rā koutō ki te tari a te mate. Ngoa pīra ko rā ko ana te kura kura a te rangi e tū nei. Ngoa koutō ngā mate o te tau Māori. Ngoa whakarongo mai rā, whakarongo mai rā, whakarongo mai rā. Ngoa tara mai nuku e rui rui a ngā mate o te rangi rui rui a rui rui a. Tara mai nuku e rui rui a. Mate o te tonga, rui rui a, rui rui a. Tora mai nuku e, rui rui a, ngā mate o te rāwhiti, rui rui a, rui rui a. Tora mai nuku e, rui rui a, ngā mate o te uru, rui rui a, rui rui a. E, rui rui a, ngā mate taraware, ngā mate pia e roa, ngā mate wawati tata, ngā mate o horere. Ngā rui rui a, ngā mate taurakaraka, ngā mate kuare, ngā mate ki atu ngā i tūa. Ngā rui rui a, ngā rua, nuku ngā rua hine, ngā ngā kauheke, ngā kau mātua. Ngā rui rui a, ngā tāne, ngā wā hine, ngā taiohi, ngā taitamariki, ngā kāhunga, ngā ngā mokapuna. Ngā tara mai nuku e, rui rui a ngā mate, wa te nā whaitua, wa te nā whaitua, wa te matu whānui katoa. Ngā tara mai nuku e, rui rui a ngā mate o te tau Māori, hei whaitū i tarangi e tūnei. Ngā nō rera koutō ko ngā mate o te tau kwaipa, wa whaitū rangi tia koutō. Kwa wetu rangi tia koutou, kwa wetu rangi tia koutou. Kwa whana, whana, paramai te toki a te ata huaki rangi. Haumie, huie! Haumie! Ara ngara mo tariki ki te ahurawa, ki te puhukenga, ki te wahananga, ki te tahura, ki te tahuira, ki te rua, nuku kwa kwa rangi. O taki nara te kawa. Ko te ngā watu a tahi, ko te ngā watu a rua, ko matariki a hunga nui, ko te ngā watu a tare, ko te ngā watu a whā, ko tupu a nuku, ko tupu a rāngi. Ko te ngā watu a rima, ko te ngā watu a roe, ko waiti ki uta, ko waita ki tai. Ko te ngā watu a witi, ko te ngā watu a warue, ko waipuna a rangi e, ko auru rangi. Ko te ngā watu a iwa, ko te ngā watu a wahuru, ko hiwa i te rangi mana ko nui. Ko te kinara te kawa, ko te kawa, humu, kahu, kahu, whetu. Tau maha ki runga, tau maha ki rara, tau maha ki ngā hua o te tau mau. Hei ngā whetu heri kai mai, ko te pua nui a tāne, ko te tini a tangaroa, ko rama hoko kumara. Nei rā kwa hora nei, hei kai mā koutou. Mā tariki pā taka nui a te rangi. Au hia ke ko ngā hua o te ane o ne, au hia ke ko ngā hua o te nehe, nehe nui. Au hia ke ko ngā hua o te wai Māori, au hia ke ko 
para jugar te voy a Oh, hija, que go te gustaba para caer a tu. Oh, hija, que go te gustaba para caer a tu. Oh, hija, que go te gustaba para caer a tu. Oh, hija, que go te gustaba Oh, hija, que go te gustaba para Oh, hija, que go te gustaba para caer a tu. Mata a Riquie. Oh, hija, que go te gustaba para caer Oh, hija, que quirunga. Oh, hija, que quirunga. Bueno. Bueno, ahora más te toca aquí hasta jugar aquí en aquí, Javier. Ay, 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 the boy at the night, a car by who and a boot, a how he put on a car. Did you have to go off of Karaki down there? Anna. Did you have to go to Haruki down there? Anna. Did you have to go to Moki down there? Anna. Did you have to go get to get down there? Anna. What's the matter? I go to fight with the matter to Wahoo. What's the matter? I forgot to go fight with the matter. Atakinara Rihia mai rā tāra hiki te venua hau mago, koia! Pukā hunu kue! Rihia mai rā tāra hiki te venua hau mago, koia! Hine te o tāte! Rihia mai rā tāra hiki te venua hau mago, koia! Hine mā hiti hiti e! Rihia mai rā tāra hiki te venua hau mago, koia! Hine mā reka reka e! Rihia mai rā tāra hiki te venua hau mago, koia! Hine rau mati e! Rihia mai rā tāra hi te venua hau mago, koia, hau mia e. Rihia mai rā tāra hi te venua hau mago, koia, ranga tapu hinga hinga e. Rihia mai rā tāra hi te venua hau mago, koia, ranga marae roa e. Rihia mai rā tāra hi te venua hau mago, koia, koia. Ia ngā ruru i taku māra tau tāne, ia tūpere mere taku ngakinga, ia putako te ora. Maronga hau whenua, i te tau e tūnei, whānua, whānua, hara mai te tōki ata hua ki rangi, hau mie, ui e! Tātipu wa mai angi, te tawhito mai angi, te kawa e ngā tarangi, mai angi ki runga tipu wa harangi, mana nui, mana roa te pōkai tara, urai na mai rā tō mata ki a māra ke rake ai ngā hua te tau, Ua ki nga mai rā te tata au wharara ta au ngare re Ua ki nga mai rā te tata au wahu kau ka tea Ua ngā rā kau kou wha, ku ngā rā kau hei atu a Ka hau ki utā, ka hau ki waho, ka hau te mau Ka te mauri nō wai, ka te mauri nō tāne Tāne te tūturi ko tāne, te whewhiki ko tāne Ho kau kā ko tāne, ma tāhi ko tāne mahu tā Ki aho ki mai rā te mau, mi awi te wā tapu nui a tāne Koi pū horeti a taku pua rā ka au, koi tā māua taku pua manu ki mai rā a te māuri o rā. Ki taku uru tau matua, ki taku hāpua kōkō, ki taku tūtū kai hua, ki te manga tawai are hua. Whe aro rā te aro rā ki o ngā manu mō, wana ngā manu ahere, ngā manu pārai, ngā manu ririki, ngā manu repo repo. Ngā manu kai ki ko ngā manu rangatira, ngā manu a tāne, ko puna wai ko ki utā, ko huru manu ki tai. Ki aho ki mai rā a te māuri o rā ki te ka auru, E miro miro wā e tāne, ngā horo horo pua ki runga, rūpe atu rua ki raro. Ka mui a te tini o hakituri, te tini māhoi hoi, te tini pona iwe. Ngā uri o taro hua, ngā uri o muhum huku te aita ngā pēta ki te tau hau e tū mai nei. Whanno, whanno, whara mā hai te toki ata hua ki rangi hau mi e. Ui e, i tāhi e. Mai angi ta tawai to mai angi ta kawai ngā tarangi mai angi ki runga wai tī Mana nui mana rā ta wai maui Urai na mai rā ta matake a mā rake rake ai ngā tohu a ta tau Te nā tapuna kai hoai ki, tupu kai hoai ki, te ipu kai hoai ki, te mana whana wā kai hoai ki Te nā tapuna kai puna kai wāra ki, tupu kai puna kai wāra ki 
Tipu kai puna kai wariki, tamana venawa kai puna kai wariki. Tena to puna kai horangi, to pu kai horangi, to ipu kai horangi, tamana venawa kai horangi. Lai mai to maori tu, to maori rere, to maori ha puna puna, to maori wai pakaika. Lai mai to maori oro para venawa mea. O ai tiki runga, ko ai tiki oro. To mana o ngauri o i horangi tuna nui, tuna oro, tuna heke kia wai nui. Heke heke mai ke a tangaro ararau, e tuku e heke ki to moinga. Tu mai to kohi o atu taifo atu e kapa atu ki arehua. Tere kata inanga, tere kata kokopu, tere kata pātuki, tere kata piharau, tere kata upakororo. E tere ki tēnei kūpenga, ki tēnei taurimu, ki tēnei hihinaki, ki tēnei hūtu. O i o fivi o i o rauia. To pa ta pa tika na mai ku me ku me tika na mai taka taka hi a tika na mai ha parangi tia. Ka u ka nga ta tangaro fivi a tangaro rauia i ta tau ha u e tu mai nei. Vana vana hara mai te tuki a ta hua ki rangi. Hai mi e. Mai yangi to tapi to mai yangi to kawai nga taragi mai yangi kirunga wai ta mana nui mana rata wai tai hurai na mai rata mata kia ma rake rake ai nga to hua to tau ngaru nui ngaru ra ngaru pa ngaru pa ngaru mata ngaru tua te a tama te a nui nui tama te a roro ho fa ti kirunga kita tahu na kia pa 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 na mui to tai o re hua. E a marina to mana nui a ki wake maua e roki roki rā to mana tā poka poka tā whagi. Hauru a rā ki ngā māra ki hau a te nihi nihi a tā mana. O hine mana ko ki wā ko hine puhi ko hine a hupuku. O tangara whakamautai. O tako a hoko pū whakahara ko te tini a tangaro. He wai tangara e whanoa i ki waha. He wai tangara e whanoa i ki uta. Ki waho ki mahora nui a te a ki uta ki tamarai a hine tua kirikiri. Wakaranga mai rā tangara, tangara a timu, tangara a pari, tangara a tae, tangara a mua, tangara a rato. Tukua mai ngā huma tae tae, tukua mai ngā rā ngā ika. O te ai taka, tangara a huakina mai rā te au ki rangiriri. Tangara a whiwhi a tangara a rauia, huita tau hau e tū mai nei. Whānau, whānau, hara mai te tuki a ta hua ki rangi. Hau mi e! Hui e! Hau ki e! E tu, ai puna, rangi hura i na mai rā tā, matake a mā, raka raka i ngā ta hua te tau. Kia kawa tēnā i tau, a tau rangi, kia kawa tēnā i tau, a wako a ngā kai hā, a ka ngā hau ai kai para hea ngā hua. Harabwa i ta puna huna u harabwa i ta hau au a hataru kahi kahe kofa ta pata harabwa i ta hu keri keri harabwa i ta hu atata e pūra rā he apa. Harabwa i wai puna rage he puna wai kiruga he puna wai kiraro he hapu apu a wai kiruga he hapu apu a wai kiraro he wai fetu kiruga he mano a penu a kiraro. O mana wati a Hawaii a ra ki runga ki te mata a te whanua, ko te wai te tata a te whanua, ko te whanua te tata a te tangata. Nga ta re 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 waru tiana, ko a wa 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 kia, waka moana tiana, puke ngā wai. E ka mua i te ua pū, ko hau pau te ua, ra tuki te ua i kia kia te ua pāruru, te ua tīhengi te ua tata, riki nā mai, mana riki tā pua pua e tā. O mua i rā, te pāuri ngā rā, rai a mai rā, ki rā rā, ki apu pa hama, ko ki apu pa makuru, ki a tānu i ai te papa i te tau hau e tū mai nei. Pārno, pārno, hara mua i te toki a te hua ki rangi. Au mie! O ie! Ui ai ki e! E tū ai puna rangi ura i no mai rā, te mata ki a mā raka raki ai ngā tau a te rau, Kia uri rā, ki ngā tau a uru rangi, ura i ngā wai rā tā, mata ki a mā raka raki a i ngā tahu a te tau. Kia au, ki te kawa a rangi, kia au, ki te kawa whakara, kia au, ki te kawa uru kā rai rai, ki tā ki ngā rā, te kawa ka te kawa 
Kia te kokota a ki a vitikau peka ki a mariau ki a hotu i te hirangi ki a pia uai ki a tamarakau ki ngā vetu tapu o te tau. Ringi ia i te kete ko te ikanui o te rangi ka ngaro ki runga rā tihe Māuri o rā. Mā noa mai e te putanga o matariki mā noa mai e te ariki o te rangi mā noa mai e te mātahi o te tau. Ka e ke tiro mahutaka e ke rangaru pe ka e ke rangi tā hua hua kai au te tau ranga taku tū, te Māuri tū, te wewia nuku tū. Puritia mai rota te vivia rota tēnei, te Māori ka whakapiki, te Māori ka whakakake, te Māori o te tauhau, Māori e tū mai nei. Nau mai matariki, nau mai. Nau mai tamanui tērā, nau mai. Nau mai te mātahi o te tau, nau mai. O te tauhau, Māori tēnei, te hara mai nei, ko ai te matapu nga mai iangi, te matapu i hoio. I te tauhau e tū mai nei, pānu. Pāno hara mai te toki a tahua ki rangi. Hau mie! Hui e! Hui hoi ki e! Koutoa ua whetu o te rangi. Ua tuku a tu te kawa ki a matari ki tēnei ka whakahoki a koutou ki te ahuru taka o te pō. Ki rei rā koutou na ho mai a i a he wā ka puta mai a noa koutou. Whakaro kora e rangi ki te ahure wa te mana wanei ki te atahua ki rangi te mana wanei ki te atahua ki papa. He tīra matuku tīra marangi, tia hoki runga, tia hoki raro, tia hoki rangi a te anui. Mana wa mai hoki te whatu whiwhi a te whatu rawe a te whatu korongata, he toko uri, he toko te akarere hu ki te pō. Mana wa mai te putaka o e nei rua nuku i ngā awka mā tau tau o te ata nei. Ki te kawa matariki, o tēnei ka puta ki te whai au ki te au mārama. E para i te rangi tuku a mai i rā tama nui ki te rā ki te tahatū a te au, hai hura i te kahu nui a te pō. Tā whiri e puriti a mai te puru i te komata o te rangi, te piere o te rangi, te gotata o te rangi, ranga i a tōha ki te whenua ki te au, hai miri i te kiri, hai miri i te whenua. Waka garo tā wera te whetu o te atako marere o tonga ki te muritu matapongi o koko, uritu matapongi o koko te a. E tō rehua, te ariki o te pō rerehu, matariki rerehu, huaka rerehu rā, koutou ngā whetu tapu o te tau. E rehu te ikanui o te rangi ke te ke te ata, ne nau atu ko te pō, nau mai ko te au. Ko, ko, ko e a, ko wa te a tihe, mauri ora ki te hai au, ki te au mārama. Wano, wano hara mai, te ata hua ki rangi, hau mie, hui e, hai ki e. Unuhi a unuhi a te pūtake o ngā kōrero te wānanga unuhi a rā te hautapu o ngā riki e nei ruanuku. Whakaidia e rongo ki ngā pātū o te rangi. Ka whakamau atu ki reina ki a tīnā. Tīnā! Hui e haumi e! Hoi ki e! Matariki tā pua hua matariki a wake i te kai ki runga matariki a huka nui e. Te ope rua matariki ka rewa matariki ka maua te hinu ka rewa matariki ka rewa te tanaka na e. Te ra a pohutu ka wae mo hiri ki runga he pai poka mahara ki a putau ka hurangi ku. Ira tara ta mai ira koutou hei whetu i te pō Kore kore ko mai ira i te roki roki o nga mahara mo a ke tonu a tuwe Hei te ki runga, hei te ki rara He re re nei o wai he mana pa mua te wirua He ora ngā mō te tangata, he ke te kai mā te iwi, he. Ko ripo ripo tunu nei tia te awa, 
pare pare pananga roto pare ngare ngate puna tane te hoye ora he koi hira e raat marai nuya ki wat ka na bana banai raruya koi hoye ta hia mera ki rangate tiniya ikatere ruk hia ki ta koi ya ki ta tai e ka ma te tiniyo ta ha hi ki ma te te to kua ta ga ro ha koi a hu
ノットタイパカルマキテタイパカラムラムライホワナノットイトラギトゥワナカウワナカウイマラマハンホーラギヌヤトゥネイヤトウラウラカプタキワクタラコキリティアナエプカナヘマタラギカトウタラギテアタト
That was the Whāngai i Te Hautapu ceremony here at Te Papatongarewa, an insight into the ceremony never seen on a live broadcast before, led by our Papa, Professor Sir Pau Temara and his Ruanuku. I don't know about you at home, but I had to fix my makeup. It was a very special event, and I hope you appreciated the fact that there were some some ways that we could really understand and engage today in terms mm. of having subtitles, in terms of us really laying out what was happening. I hope that you felt the way to it, mm. that you really felt the spirit and the energy of today. I felt it right down my face, <laughs> which actually was full of tears. Yeah. And that's what it's about. It's about release. It's been a heavy year and this is our time to let go. And did you notice that people stood differently yeah. after we had Hautapu? Yeah. And that's what it's all about. It's about letting go. It's about setting our intentions for the year ahead. And we really hope that you felt that at home. Mm. Kamutu he tuatahi tanga hoki tēnei mōku. This was my first experience of a hautapu. And oh, yeah, kahi nawa nawa te kiri. I was getting goosebumps. <laughs> um, and, and lovely to see all of our, our, our local mana whenua there, uh, the Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern um, with the kai. It didn't help that I can smell the kai where <laughs> I'm standing here at our broadcast uh, studio. So these Ruanuku that you can see, they've trained for many years under Sir Po. This is not the sort of ceremony that just anyone Didn't can just carry. just happen overnight. No. <laughs> <laughs> and those kind of intentions and the training and the spirituality, I love seeing that in our men, mm. a way of expressing how we come together and the wahine with their karanga. Okay, so that is the standard. Just absolutely so special and really had us all right there in terms of our feelings and hope that you can also welcome the man who has led this kaupapa of making Matariki not only a public holiday but something that more New Zealanders can understand. Tene ka mihiki a koe te rangatira, te rangi mātāmua who joins us now. Very busy man. <laughs> Kei te pēhe ngā piro piro, how are you feeling after that? Yeah, pretty emotional actually, you know, it's a uh, long time coming. Yeah. Pretty overwhelmed. You're tired too. <laughs> <laughs> but, but to have the Ruanuku there, I think everyone could actually feel it. But today, you gave them an opportunity to truly understand it, even yes. with subtitles. Tell us about that decision. Well, it's unusual for us to take that opportunity to, um, I guess, translate and, um, those words because they are, are, are from our culture. But I think. Um, Professor Te Emara, um, Sir Pau, the other day said something on television. He said, um, the survival of anything, our culture, um, means it has to be brought into a new space and to, with new ideas and new approaches. And I'm I, I just so elated and proud of what we have all done today. Yeah. Yeah. Can we be very nosy and ask you about what the Prime Minister just said to you? We saw a <laughs> shot of you talking. <laughs> she said, actually, um, that... Uh, well, I, I said to her that this is that moment where we let go of those difficulties of the, of the year gone. We, we sever the bonds of the, the weight of some of the topics, the difficulties, the, 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 the issues that we've had to deal with, and we look to the promise of a bright future. And she said that she was definitely going to do that. And um, she, we just, you know, thanked each other for, for I, I think, doing something that is... It is unprecedented, but it is something that our children and grandchildren will say that is a moment where we came of age as a nation, and I think this is our moment. E Huarangi, I saw uh, Hiwe Terangi was glistening rather brightly there. When did you, when did you karakia, how long ago did you karakia to Hiwe Terangi to make this a dream and aspiration of, <laughs> of getting us a national public holiday around Matariki? Uh, it has been a... It has been something that I've been talking about probably mm. for about 20 years, but mm. I just want to say uh, I have been fortunate enough to be involved in this, but there's been a lot of work by lots and lots of people and I don't want to uh, not acknowledge them at this time. I, I remember the first bill that was put into the house by Rahui Katini. I want to acknowledge Rahui. Mm. All the kids who go to school and all the teachers that have been teaching them about Matariki and them going home and telling their parents, did you know about Matariki? Mm. And then that groundswell yeah. is the reason why we are where we are. Kapai, tēnā koe rangi. Thank you for joining us this morning, everyone. And as we say, mano atia, a matariki.
Earlier this morning, we experienced for the first time on a live broadcast the sacred ceremony of Whāngai i Te Hautapu, led by Professor Sir Po Temara alongside Te Matapunenga, a group of Ruānuku trained experts in karakia incantations to make offerings to each star of the Matariki constellation. As part of the Whāngai Te Hautapu ceremony, we see various kai related to some of the stars of Matariki, such as crops from the ground, the sea, the trees, as well as fresh water, cooked and offered to the stars and environment and thanks for the nourishment we've been provided for in the last year. Each star is being remembered in this ceremony and we've been reminded of all their properties to bring us together to acknowledge our environment and all the elements as well as setting our intentions and hopes for the year ahead. Manawatia, amatariki. No maira, welcome to our very special broadcast celebrating Matariki. This is the very first time that a Māori cultural event seated in Mātauranga Māori, astronomy and our environment has been honoured with a public holiday. It's a time to reflect, to celebrate and to reset. 
Now this morning here in the beautiful Te Whanganui Atara Wellington and right across the Motu via various channels and platforms, we are so thrilled to be celebrating Matariki, the Māori New Year with you all. Manawatia tia a Matariki, happy Māori New Year to all New Zealanders wherever you are tuning in from. Tēnā rā koutou katoa, I'm Stacey Morrison and we're live in the beautiful Marae, Rongo Marae Roa, at Te Papa Tongarewa. You can probably hear everyone here <laughs> in the Museum of New Zealand in Te Whanganui Atara. So this is a special day for all New Zealanders and we do hope that wherever you're watching this and however you're watching it's helping you and your whānau engage in what Matariki can mean to us all. Kia ora, I'm Marti Smith. What an occasion and location. Could there be a better setting for this historic day? Rongo Marairoa. Rongo, of course, is the atua, the god of cultivated foods, in particular our beloved kumara, which we've had on the hangi here this morning, and hopefully Stacey and I will get to try some very, very soon. No one seems to be focusing on kai for us, but today <laughs> is about kai. It's about being together. It's about karakia, as we've just had, and it's also about stargazing, taking that moment of contemplation. So today we celebrate Matariki, Manawa Te Ao Matariki, and it's an invitation to all of Aotearoa to both understand the old traditions and to be part of creating new ones of our own. And if you're still wondering about the concepts of Matariki, they're very universal and meaningful. In a nutshell, it's a time to reflect, to celebrate and to reset. First, we reflect by remembering those we've lost and acknowledging our own journey over the last year, which has been a big year. A trying year. Yeah. Uh, then we celebrate by reconnecting with whānau, good friends and enjoying good kai, which we hope you're doing right now. And finally, we reset. We prepare for the year ahead with a focus on well-being and life balance, still a goal, <laughs> but also our hopes and all of our intentions. I hear you on the life balance <laughs> yeah. one just quietly. Uh, Music, Puoro, plays a big part in our togetherness and this morning we'll be enjoying three acoustic sets comprising of live performances from leading and emerging artists including the gorgeous May Sirica. And coming up next, the first of our three panel discussions with Julian Wilcox, Mataya Kepa, Annabelle Lee Mather and Lillian Hanley. Just after 8 o'clock we have the Matariki Address from Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern at 8.30. The second of our three panels which is hosted by Moana Maniopoto with guests Dame Hinewehi Mohi, Hana Rafiti Maipi Clark and Andre Afa Mangasanga. At 9 o'clock, live music, and then at 9.30, the third of our Matariki panels, when John Campbell was joined by Dr. Hare Williams, Professor Rangi Matamua and Anganga Lafili Fepulai Tapuai. That's followed at 10 o'clock by the documentary Matariki Explained, and at 10.30, more beautiful waiata, including, including Macy Deka. But right now, let's join Julian Wilcox. Takina, takina, takitakina, mai ngā manu o te rangi karanga mai. Karanga mai, karanga mai ki tēnei tau matakōrero, karanga mai ki te kaupapa o te rāti. He wa mauri ora, kia tātou katoa. No mai hara mai, morena, kia ora. My name is Julian Wilcox and welcome to these very special panels, three panels in which we get to dive into the heart and soul of Matariki through the personal experiences, perspectives and predictions of our very distinguished guests Indeed. First up, I'm joined by Lillian Hanley, a writer, filmmaker and television producer and long-term Te Ao Māori collaborator. E ko te nā koe, nā mihi nui te ao koe. Also joining us is Tuhunga Karakia scholar, writer and performer Mataya Kepa, the leading light of the company he created called Ai Kōrero, Heuri no Te Arawa, Ngāti Maniapoto me Ngāti Rārua. Mataya, te nā koe. Te nā koe. And also joining us is multi-award winning executive producer, writer and journalist Annabelle Lee Maitha Hildi no Ngaitahu Ngāti Kahungunu me Ngāti Mamoe Bells. Tēnā koe. Tēnā koutou katoa e hoa mā. Mataya me timata iā koe. Uh, I recall those words in that famous haka of Ruo Moko. Ko te hautapu e rite ki te kai nā matariki. So tell us about the hautapu. Ah, tēnā koe jūs, tēnā kōrua. Ah, tēnā koutou. Mm -hmm. uh, as we pay homage to Matariki, I think it's quite important to also turn our attention to Puanga. To revert back to the Pātai and Hautapu, uh, before uh, Rangi Mātāmua made his way to Te Tairāwhiti, uh, the name of those ceremonies were called Umu Kohu Kohu Fetu. And once he uh, had his wānanga with Sir Derek Lardelli, 
Derek spoke to him about that haka, and the hautapu became part of our vernacular. Mm. And when it comes to the commercial arm of Matarikiism, uh, with regards to the pronunciation of these ceremonies, uh, Rangi thought that it'd be better for the sake of pronunciation to revert or to use the term uh, hautapu. But those of us who were practicing their kaupapa before, Rangi Mātai were met with Sir Derek Ladali, uh, those were called umu kohu kohu mm. fetu. Uh, now we have hautapu as the offerings that correlate to the four stars, tupu anuku, tupu arangi, waiti, waita. Uh, some other terms with regards to hautapu, you have whāngai hau, tāpaitanga, oha oha, and uh, tāwhara kaiatua. But today we saw the ceremony, whether it be umu kohu kohu or hautapu, uh, that ceremony was put in place with regards to honouring the whakamoitau, farewelling of the year gone by, and the welcoming of the Matahi o te tau, or the mm. rise of Matariki. And there's another terminology in the middle there called uh, Matahi Karipiwai, which would be like the uh, Matariki, uh, ah, Matariki Eve. Ah. It would be like the Matariki Eve. Oh, and that's an honour to the um, forgotten Kumara and the Mara before we prepare the lands again for the coming year. So what we saw this morning with a you opt to go with the umu kohu kohu or the hautapu terminology. That ceremony is the bridge between the whakamoetau and the matahi o tetau. I like that term you use, matarikiism, mm. uh, because you've made this open and accessible to many people, even in the karakia that were performed this morning. There were translations for them so that the kaupapa can be inclusive. That's a wonderful thing, and it's different. Oh, it's tika. And uh, just yesterday, I saw a picture of uh, David Tua wearing a korowai. <laughs> and uh, for me, that's no different to where Matariki is going now. Matariki may have stemmed from a tikanga Māori, tirohanga Māori, mātauranga Māori perspective, but it's now an Aotearoa thing. Mm. Uh, from this day onwards, our walk will be different. We will walk taller, we'll think higher, we'll dream bigger, mm. uh, because this is part and parcel of creating the new identity for Aotearoa. Then no way. And about, I think it's an amazing thing. I mean, you, you've been in the media for a long time to have access to this ceremony and process and have these tohunga being open to having this information, this transmission of knowledge on live, online broadcast. It is. It's remarkable. And it reminds me of something that Rangi Mata Mua says, which is, you know, it's one thing to study a culture, but what's more important is that we practice a culture. And I feel like this is a really important um, part of that journey that we open up Matauranga that's re remained tapu and um, share it wider. And I guess it's a bit of a balancing act about how much we share, how much remains um, t tapu and, and how much we give. But for me personally, growing up, there was no Matariki. We didn't talk about Matariki. We didn't celebrate Matariki. So in my lifetime, to be able to go from knowing nothing about it to having you know people like my tungani Mataya, who are now these incredible um, vessels of this amazing matauranga that connects us to the taiao and to our tūpuna and all of those things is a remarkable thing and it's beautiful to see other New Zealanders embracing it and mm. I can really feel the difference this year um, how much um, the rest of the country have, have bought into to this whakaro and at a time when you know the planet's in crisis environmentally mm. anything that connects us to the taiao has got to be a good thing. Tēnā koe, tēnā koe i e rā kōrero. Uh, Lillian, you're a little bit younger than the rest of us. Um, <laughs> Thank you. And, and, a lot, and a lot younger than one of us. Um, <laughs> um, but you grew up with a Matariki culture, if I can put I don't know if that's the right way of putting it, but you grew up in a, in a time where Matariki was starting to be embraced by the community. Ah, it's good to be practised, at least, I suppose. And I guess acknowledging, too, that, yes, that it's very much um, present mm. now. You can very much see it. But I remember it would have been 20 years ago uh, at, at, at sort of primary school, I was privileged to be in a uh, full immersion Te Reo Māori classroom and the kaupapa behind that, uh, as was, you know, the intention of the community who created that, um, was to practice these things and to celebrate these things. So I was privileged enough to, um, I guess, experience, though I don't actually remember the word hotapu at that mm -hmm. time, but to, to practice that yeah. um, as, as a child um, with our community. I will say though that it was a smaller community. It wasn't everyone that was doing it. You know, like I, I was privileged to be in that classroom, um, doing the thing. You know, offering uh, kai and celebrating those who had passed and farewelling those who had passed um, and telling the stories as well, so that we were familiar with the different fetu and and this this 
incredible uh, scientific story mm. uh, that Māori uh, have offered to, to, or you know, have in Aotearoa. I think you've, you've hit on a really, really nice line there, which is about telling telling the story. I mean, you're in media, Bells. You're in media now too, too as well. I mean, telling the story of Matariki. How do we continue to do that? And I'll open it up to anyone to answer. What's the best way of ensuring we do that well? Well, one of the things I've been thinking about during Matariki is, you know, it's a time to acknowledge um, those who have passed on over the last year. And when, when I was a child, my taua, she was the best storyteller. And even though by the time I was born, her mother, her parents, her poa was dead, um, I feel like I have an intimate relationship oh, with God, them because my taua brought them alive for me and, and the kōrero that she used to share with us as kids. So for me, I've been thinking a lot about how can I do that for, for my tamariki and make sure that they feel a strong connection to those who have passed on. And, and I have to say, my mother's already acing it with my babies and they come home and they're like, oh, kua mate, her granddad. I'm like, yeah, well, that was quite some time ago. I'm glad you're feeling the mum right now. So just those simple things we can do in our, in our own home I can keep those stories going. Tika, the stories and the conversations for me, at least, um, again, as somebody Pākehā, being able to uh, share this now, like yeah. I, like you're saying, uh, uh, recent years, I remember standing on the Wellington waterfront a few years ago where there was a proper matariki celebration. Uh -huh. You know, installations, uh, light, uh, fire, all yeah. of the things that, you know, relate to this kaupapa. And I stood there and I was like, wow, mm. you know, mainstream is, is getting on board. <laughs> yeah. You know, the, the, the wider country is getting well, on board. Well, Aotearoa, Aotearoa, Aotearoa. Aotearoa. We're going to take a short break now and we'll be back in a moment with more from our panel and about Lee Mather, Mataya Kepa and Lillian Hanny. Hey, kia ora, I'm Louis Baker and this is my song, Rainbow. Said I love you like a rainbow
and we're celebrating Matariki with our Whatakupu Annabelle Lee Mather, our Tohunga Mataia Kepa and our Pia Lillian Henley. Tēnā koutou katoa, ngā mai anō rā Mataia. Uh, there's a lot of responsibility on people like you mm. around Matariki to protect that which we know Matariki to be. So let's talk about that. How do you continue to lead Matariki so that it retains the Matariki ness or what you call yeah. the mat Matariki-ism of oh. Matariki? Oh, tika, I think... Uh, for too long now, have we been Māori in New Zealand? It's time for a Pākehā to be a member of Aotearoa. Mm. And that transition of them coming over to the Matariki Kaupapa, I feel there are three stages. You have your gold stage, the razzle-dazzle, extravaganza, umu kohu kohu, tohunga uh, at the ready, kai karanga at the ready, and the appropriate kai for the stars. I think under that, is for those within hapu that might not know the kaupapa to that extent, they want to do it. Mm. And maybe at their bronze level, what can you do at home? Mm. There are a lot of people out there, and I think in essence, this is what we wanted, mm. was for Aotearoa to buy into the kaupapa. So it's a bit audacious for us to say, no, no, I should just stick to the razzle-dazzle and extravaganza. But a lot of people out there, your general Kiwi uh, or New Zealander wants to do it, and they can do it. Mm. Um, as long as they follow through with those three steps of commemoration, <coughs> location of aspiration, and celebration. Mm. Mm. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Sounds like a Stevie Wonder song, but, uh, but no, 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 I get it, I get it. And so, but from, from your perspective, your role in, in all of this is to, is to help ensure that it is done the way that we want it to be done, and in a Māori way, because... This is a Māori lead kaupapa. Kia ora. Mm, kia ora. Yeah, and it's important for Māori to continue front-footing uh, these kaupapa. And one thing I'd like to make mention of is how um, Pau Te Mara, Sir Pau Te Mara mm. and Rangi Mātāmua have been giving and um, warm to the idea of distributing their mātauranga. Mm. From a Māori hierarchy paradigm, your tohunga were ostracised from the people. They were considered weirdos because they associated to the heavens. Mm. Uh, your rangatira associated to the people. Your ariki dictated what happened. You had your kaimahi and things like that. So a lot of mātauranga were reserved for particular people. For a tohunga, might be the same enrolment process to get into Harvard or Cambridge. Mm -hmm. For your kaimahi to get into an MMA gym. Mm -hmm. ne? So there were those systems for people to get into those. But because of the foresight that Sir Pau Temara has, he wants to open that door. Uh -huh. Why? Because we are conditioning and wiring our tamariki Māori um, to be pro Māori first and foremost and find the Māori equivalent to everything in the world. Mm. Teach, te reo, uh, teach science with, through the vehicle of te reo Māori. Mm. Teach mathematics. Te mea, te mea, from kohanga right up until 18 when they graduate from school. After school, they ask in the world, how they te whakapono Māori? Uh. You've taught us, you've conditioned us to think about the, um, equi the Māori equivalent to it. So Po is feeding that hungry mind. No. Po is feeding that hungry soul. And Matariki might be front-footing front-footing that uh, journey of lessening the tapu mm. on some of our practices so it's consumable. I might, I might just say, and in, in, in acknowledging too what you're saying around that sharing, um, I think that, that 
comes with that too, a responsibility uh, to pick that up. And so what, um, I mean, again, me as Pākehā, but also Tawiwi, Tangata Tiriti, um, you know, it's time for us to step into Aotearoa. It's, sure. it's well time for yeah. that to happen. What Matariki is, it really situates us here. Mm. It is the stories of this land, it's the practices of this land. Uh, and, it, and it means, you know, we've talked about why is it that we do celebrate Christmas or Easter? Those are things from other lands. And, and yes, we can acknowledge that, but actually this is something that we, uh, as people who have found a home here, can situate our feet here uh-huh. and look up at the sky and be like, ah, kei kōnei mātou, actually, as, as a people. And I think that that unity uh, is important while acknowledging too that, that it is Māori-led and uh-huh. that they, you know, Māori will maintain those practices and lead the conversations of how we go about doing that. Uh, and the other thing I think, and Annabelle, you mentioned this in the previous panel, around Te Taio. And the issues that we have with climate around the world, not just in Aotearoa, around the world now, but the role this kind of day can have in helping us build a culture around tiaki taiao mm. and our role as kai tiaki. And I know you've got some thoughts on that. Well, um, when you think about our tūpuna and how sustainably they lived and how critical these harvests were for them, it wasn't like you could pop down to Countdown or Pack yeah. and Save if the kumara didn't come through. Um, but in, in, And so, they, you know, they se- celebrated that. But in this day and age, we, we uh, I think about that, that saying, um, huri te ao, huri te tikanga, mm. And so, you know, ask not what Papa Tuanuku can provide for you, but what you can provide for Papa Tuanuku. And just thinking about real things that we can do, like take your tamariki for a walk along the beach with a rubbish bag and pick up as much rubbish as you can. Yeah. Go to your local creek and, um, and pull out the rubbish there. You know, plant a tree, put out some, um, some rat traps or whatever. And the other thing too is whaifakaro, uh, ki te hunga rawa kore, you know. Oh, wow. um, instead of trick or treating with your kids, take them for a walk around the neighbourhood, knock on your mm. neighbour's doors and ask what kai cans they've got spare oh, and wow. donate them to the local food bank. Not the green beans and the old beetroot, like the good stuff, the good <laughs> stuff. But um, that, that excites me that, you know, we're all going to celebrate matariki in our own different ways and there's going to be beautiful tikanga that develop around that that are unique to each hapu, each whanau, yeah, each iwi. And I, yeah. I think the other thing that you've mentioned, which is really important, I think, is you've talked about us as a community. So not just Māori as a community, but us in the communities in which we live, which is something that I haven't thought of before, but I think it's really important if you can expand upon that thought for me, because... That, that would be amazing if on a day like this we just, in our communities, got together and did what you're talking about, those kind of activities. Mm. And I think there's a real desire to do that. And, you know, Matariki is so great too because for, for uh, I feel like schools have been a real yeah. kind of kōhanga yeah. for this kaupapa. And, um, you know, there's been a discussion about our school because it's always been our unit that... that Um, has taken care of it about, you know, sharing it with the wider school and they're hungry and they're keen. So this year the karakia got put on the school um, mail out so that everyone who attends can, um, you know, can participate. But you don't have to be a part of a kura community Mm -hmm. to do that or connected to a particular marae. There's things that all New Zealanders can do no matter how humble or or wonderful that can contribute to this beautiful mm. cope up. I'm seeing lots of nodding. Oh heads. well, as peer, yes, <laughs> as a peer today, I would, I would um, second that. I think that, especially my generation, um, and those uh, uh, younger than me, uh, we we are hungry. I think mm. for connection. Mm. You know, there has been a real disconnect, um, whether it's social media, whether it's whatever it might be. We're watching things online that come from elsewhere. You know, whether it's YouTube, our, some of our kids have American accents because they're watching TV or whatever it might be. I think that conversation, stories coming together, mm. that being present, the kind of idea that, yeah, OK, for this day, let's come together, let's have a kai, let's talk. Enough. What is going on with you? What is going on in your world? Whatever it might be. But should we do that on other days as well, perhaps? Yeah. Like, how do we continue that beyond just this one day? Mm. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you so much for the quarter. Yeah. Tēnā, tēnā koutou katoa. Uh, you've made the facilitator surplus to requirements. Long may that continue. <laughs> Annabelle Lee Maitha, Matai Kepa, Lillian Healy. Tēnā koutou katoa. My thanks to our pū kōrero, as I said, Matai Kepa, Annabelle Lee Maitha and Lillian Healy. Nā mi hinui kia rato. And the second of our three panels to be hosted by Moana Maniapoto will be on air just after 8.30.
So what is Matariki? Or who is Matariki? Matariki is a star cluster that rises in midwinter. Because of the season change and their deep connection to the environment, many Māori saw the rising of Matariki as a sign of the new year. So where is Matariki? The best time to see the star cluster is just before sunrise. In Aotearoa, Matariki is northeast. First look east to the line of three stars that make up Orion's belt, or Tautoru. Then, follow the direction of Tautoru to the left until you see a tiny cluster of stars. This is Matariki. Matariki can be seen from all around the world. The Middle East, Asia, Australia, Europe, North and South America. Different cultures have their own names and stories attached to the cluster. Across Europe, Matariki is known as Pleiades. Some refer to them as the Seven Sisters. Some associate Matariki with death and mourning, while some connect the stars to agriculture. In Japan, Matariki is known as Subaru, which means gathering together. Many people around the world have been guided by stars, from astrology to ocean navigation and measuring time. Since ancient times, people have looked to stars as signs to connect them with events here on Earth. Christians believe the Star of Bethlehem was a miraculous sign to mark the birth of Christ. The Bible says, there will be signs in the sun, moon and stars on the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. Many cultures believed that the positions of the stars were their creator's way of telling stories. So it seemed only natural to recognize patterns in the sky, give them names, and tell stories about them. So what's our story here in Aotearoa? The word Matariki is often referred to as the eyes of God. Mata meaning eyes and Ariki meaning God. Many Māori believe when they pass on, our spirits ascend to the sky and we become stars. Some consider Matariki to be the mother star surrounded by her children. Some say she has six children. Some say she has eight. Each star is connected to our environment. Waiti and Waita are the stars watching over our water and all the kind that live within it. One for the fresh water like our rivers and lakes, and the other for our oceans. Tupuanuku and Tupuarangi look after our kind that grow below and above the land, our veggie gardens and all that live within our trees and the sky. Waipunarangi and Ururangi are the weather stars, guardians of the rain and wind. And the final two stars are our protectors, Po Hutsukawa and Hiwaiterangi. One protects the memories of our loved ones who have passed away, while the other protects our wishes. This is the Matariki Fano. Manawatia Matariki, celebrate Matariki, kia ora no mai anō e tiwi. I'm Matai Smith and welcome back to Rongo Marairoai Te Papa Tongarewa, the Museum of New Zealand uh, on the waterfront in Pōneke, Wellington. Tēnā rā koutou katoa, hope you're having a wonderful day. I'm Stacey Morrison. Now, Rongo Marairoa, its design and construction a quarter of a century ago, was overseen by Te Papa's very first kaihautsu, the master carver, Cliff Whiting. Now, at the opening of Rongo Marairoa, Cliff made the point that this gateway, the Waharua, is a celebration of the discovery of Aotearoa by Kupe and his crew. 
It's a waharoa that also acknowledges all the migrants who have made the journey and have made their homes here in Aotearoa. This is a marae for all New Zealanders. And this is a day for all New Zealanders. Mano atia a matariki. Celebrate matariki. And it's an invitation to all of Aotearoa to both understand the old traditions and to be part of creating new ones of our own. So for those of us who are new to the concepts of matariki, they are universal and relatable for us all. So first of all, it's a time to reflect and to celebrate. We reflect by remembering those we have lost and by acknowledging our own journey over the last year. Which has been a lot. So we celebrate by reconnecting with Farno, good friends and enjoying good food. We reset, we prepare for the year ahead with a focus on well-being and also life balance. Always the goal, sometimes <laughs> hard to achieve. But music, Wayata, plays a big part in our togetherness. And this morning we'll be enjoying sweet sounds from the stars of our music world like Macy Dicker, Louis Baker, Seth Harpu. They're just some of the amazing artists who will give us a soundtrack to our first Matariki holiday. Now let's take a look at some of the wonderful moments from earlier this morning, the Matariki Whāngai i te Hautapu ceremony. Earlier this morning, we experienced for the first time on a live broadcast the sacred ceremony of Whāngai i Te Hautapu, led by Professor Sir Pau Temara, alongside Te Matapunenga, a group of Ruānuku trained experts in karakia incantations to make offerings to each star of the Matariki constellation. <laughs> As part of the Whāngai Te Hautapu ceremony, we see various kai related to some of the stars of Matariki, such as crops from the ground, the sea, the trees, as well as fresh water, cooked and offered to the stars and environment and thanks for the nourishment we've been provided for in the last year. Each star is being remembered in this ceremony and we've been reminded of all their properties to bring us together to acknowledge our environment and all the elements as well as setting our intentions and hopes for the year ahead. Manawatia Amatariki. But also Tawiwi, Tangata Tiriti. Um, you know, it's time for us to. Atahuane, that was absolutely beautiful. Those scenes from one of today's important events, the Matariki Whāngai Te Hautapu Ceremony, which are actually happening all over the country. Mm -hmm. But here at Te Papa, our Prime Minister played a role in the ceremony, as you saw, and as is our custom, she joined everyone for kai afterwards. So from that breakfast setting downstairs here at Te Papa, we cross live now to the Prime Minister, Jacinda Ardern, to deliver her Matariki address. And she will be followed by Professor Sir William Te Sir so William is a member of the Waitangi Tribunal as well as the Chair of the Repatriation Advisory Panel here at the Museum of New Zealand, Te Papa Tongarewa, and is also on Kingi to Haitia's Council of Twelve. The formalities will be rounded off by a few words from Calvin Davis, uh, the Minister of Māori Crown Relations, Te Arawhiti. Speaking of Te Arawhiti, ko whakawhiti atu tato ki tō tato premier. Let's cross now to Prime Minister Jacinda Ardu. Prime Minister, the Right Honourable Jacinda Ardern, and your husband, Honourable Ministers of the Crown, Members of Parliament, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and the world looking on and listening in. Happy Matariki Day. The human experience can be understood as a series of moments in time 
that are stitched into the fabric of our lives and our lives are interwoven with those around us, our families and friends, our communities and tribes, our people and our nation. These individual moments in time are embroidered into the tapestry of our history and tell the story of who we are and where we are from. Often, we examine these moments and explore the cross-stitchings of our past to help express who we are today and who we hope to be tomorrow. These moments in time are the essence of our nationhood and our destiny. Today is a moment in time. Today we have chosen to thread the principles and values of Matariki into who we are as a people. This is a moment to reflect on our past and the legacy left to us by our ancestors. It is a moment to celebrate who we are today, reaffirming our kinship bonds with one another and honouring our connection to the natural world. It is a moment to look to the future and dream about a brighter tomorrow for all of us who call this country home. The stars of Matariki are slightly different in their position, size, brightness, and what they represent. Yet, regardless of their individual characteristics and purpose, this morning they rose together as one cluster, as one family, releasing us from the bonds and pledges of the past year and heralding the promise of a new season. This is the message of Matariki to all of us. Yes, let us celebrate our individuality and uniqueness, our diversity and variety, and the wonderful array of colours and flavours that make us who we are. But let us also come together to rise as one people, as one nation, as one cluster, to collectively darn another historical stitch into the fabric of our national identity. The cosmos is intrinsically interwoven with what it means to be human. All of us descend from people who use the night sky to tell time, to mark events, to navigate, to know when to plant and harvest and when to hunt and fish. The movements of the heavenly bodies have always inspired our stories, our beliefs and our understanding of everything. And even today, we continue to gaze into the night sky, seeking answers to question about life itself. The stars have always guided us and served as markers and symbols for how we should live together on the earth. Matariki is one such symbol. It is a marker of time signalling the beginning of the new year and the change of season. It is associated to the environment, to food, to celebration and the gathering of people. It is underpinned by values of togetherness, sharing and love. Matariki speaks to the most noble attributes of who we are 
and, and encourages us to come together and to share in the special moments. Today is a moment in time. This is a moment that future generations will look upon and say, this is when we came of age. This is a moment where our cultural knowledge systems have become part of our collective identity. This is a moment where we have pulled tightly on the threads of our nationhood, bringing us all closer together. Today is a moment in time. New Zealand, today is our moment in time. No reira tuia te kawa, tairanga te kawa, ko te kawa oi, ko te kawa o matariki, manawatia matariki, tēnā koutou. Kia ora tātou katoa. Matariki tohu mate, rato ki a rato. Matariki tohu ora, tato ki a tato. Ti hei matariki. I want to begin by thanking everyone who is here today, and in particular, the Matariki Advisory Group led by Professor Rangi Matamua. I especially want to thank you, Rangi. You were asked just briefly earlier what it was I said to you at the end of the ceremony this morning. I'll repeat my words here. Thank you for the gift that you have helped give to this nation. Alongside the Matariki Advisory Group, your work together has been essential in ensuring we are here today and celebrating Matariki the way we are, under the gaze of Te Kahui a Matariki. Matariki has been embraced across our nation since the beginning of Aotearoa, and its celebration and regeneration over the past decades has often been spearheaded by waka voyaging leaders and by Matauranga Māori and Te Reo Māori specialists, and I pay tribute to all of that advocacy and that work. I also want to thank Sir Pautemara for his words. This is indeed a moment in time, a waypoint on a long and important journey. Now, I'm not the one on this day who is best placed to give you the history and story of Matariki, but I can tell you how it makes me feel. The moment in Rotorua in September 2020 when we first announced our intention to embark on properly formalising this day as a public holiday and watching the reaction of the young people present there to hear the news. Seeing a broadcaster just this week integrate into their programming messages about what Matariki means and why it makes us unique. Reading Miriam Kamo's account of losing her father and the role that Rangi played in helping to create, quote, a framework to express her grief and channel it towards a date and time where so many would be in concert with her as she said of Matariki, I won't be alone. And yesterday, visiting Wainui Mata Intermediate to see the Tamariki stage a performance on the many stories of Matariki. All of these moments have given me a deep sense of reflection and gratitude at the chance to witness what will be a historic milestone and one that has been so keenly embraced. Matariki provides us with a chance to reflect to think of those we have lost, and to prepare and share a sense of hope and optimism for the future. I can't think of a better moment in time for us to take up what Matariki has to offer us as individuals, but also as a nation. But as we recognise the time in our calendar that is so unique to Māori, some may ask whether this truly can be a day that our nation can unite behind. I would argue 
wholeheartedly and absolutely yes. This is now an official holiday that does not divide us by Māori ancestry or other. Rather, it unites us under the stars of Aotearoa. It demonstrates the generosity of the Indigenous people of New Zealand to share knowledge, culture and history. And it holds within it enough space for each of us to build our own meaning and traditions. In fact, it feels incredibly symbolic to me that stars that have been so integral in navigation by our ancestors form now a waypoint on our journey as a nation. A journey that does not begin or end here, but offers us the opportunity to learn and to grow. Many of us did not grow up with or learn the traditions of Matariki, but we now have that chance a chance to see our own children learn more about this period, a chance to learn from them, and a chance to create our own Matariki moments. That is the power of Matariki, and I don't underestimate it. Professor Rangi Matamua, when talking about today, said, quote, I think we have reached the point where we can say we have made a great and meaningful step towards understanding our national identity. Professor, you are not alone in this hope and belief. And I absolutely believe that this will manifest in many different ways in the years to come, some small and some large. This month, I received a letter from a five-year-old named Amy and her mother. In the letter, the mother wrote, quote, I wanted to share my gratitude that we were able to celebrate Matariki together with our new holiday. My daughter Amy composed a hand-drawn card for her cousin this year, for the first time, her cousin and her mama are coming to spend Matariki with us. Amy asked me to write these words to her cousin. You may not be my sister, but I'm going to see you soon at Matariki. Amy goes on, we have no Māori ancestry, but love our nation's cultural heritage. We are so happy Matariki is being acknowledged appropriately as a special time for our families and that a national holiday allows us to come together, end quote. And so I share this simple aspiration, that this moment in time, this waypoint in our journey, offers us the chance to come together as families, but also as a nation, under the stars of a bright, optimistic and hopeful Matariki, a space where there is room for us all. Manawatia a Matariki. <laughs> <clears throat> Where Penny Henare and I come from, there are a couple of sayings that I'd like to share with you. The first one is, And in this context, that means what an amazing occasion. The second uh, saying that we have from up north is, which means, <clears throat> My heart has swelled with pride. And it is the pride of seeing our Māoriness, the beauty, the, the breadth and depth of the beauty of our culture, our language, on display for the whole motu today. Sir Pau, ngā mihi atu kākwe, kia koutou, ngā tohunga i whakataki ai, wera I just want to acknowledge Sir Po and our tohunga who specifically composed the karakia that we heard this morning dedicated to each of the fetu of Te Kahui o Matariki. And for me, that those karakia are a taonga that have been gifted to Aotearoa today. Uh, it's my hope that in future years, when we celebrate Matariki, we will hear those same karakia resound from all the valleys and from the mountain tops, from the marae, from the kura, wherever we celebrate Matariki. 
So I just want to pay a special tribute to Sir Pau and all of the tohunga for gifting us those taonga for perpetuity. Uh, Sir Pau, uh, you said that this is a moment in time for Aotearoa. Uh, for me, when I talk about this day to my mokopuna, I'll be able to say, ko hau te tahi reira. I was there at that moment of time. Nā reira e tātou mā i runga wene i whakaaro ruarua oku. Uh, ko tenei karakia nā uh, rangi i homai ki a hau hei whakakapi ai tenei kaupapa te ata nei. Mānawa mai e te putinga o matariki. Mānawa mai e te ariki o te rangi. Mānawa mai e te mātahi o te tau. Nā reira, hare mai rā te ata hāpara o tenei tau motuhake. Kawe mai ngā hua o te tau hau. Hei oranga tinana, hei oranga wairua, hei oranga hinengaro, hei oranga whānau, tūturu, whakamau ai ki a tīna. Haumi e, hui e, tāi ki e. Calvin Davis there, Minister for Te Arawhiti, uh, joined by the Prime Minister, the Right Honourable Jacinda Ardern, and of course our Papa, Professor Sir Pote Mara, with their official address this morning, as we continue to celebrate Matariki. As Calvin Davis said, hara mai te tahi tanga. This has been an incredible morning. And as the Prime Minister said, we are united under the same sky. And then did you note as well that our sign interpreter can speak so many languages, English, <laughs> Māori and NZ sign. So, these are the moments that really define us and these are the moments that we celebrate. We've got lots more great moments to share with you this morning. So thank you again for joining us on this very historic morning as we celebrate and recalibrate through the marvels of Matariki, a brand new public holiday and a day for all New Zealanders wherever you are. Ahakoa kaihia. Matariki hunga nui is one of our sayings as well, expressing that Matariki brings people together. So we hope and trust that you're with whānau and friends today, but maybe also take the chance to reach out to people who mm -hmm. might need some company today as well. Let's open our doors and our hearts on this very special day. Matariki is a day for reflection, so take a little time to look back over the past year. The highs and the lows, the wins and the losses, and we're not talking about the New South Wales uh, rugby team. Rugby <laughs> rugby team. Uh, remember those who have passed, acknowledge their contributions, their aroha, their pain and passions, and also consider what's coming up for you and your whanau in the coming months. What's on the agenda? What are the likely obstacles? What have you got to look forward to? How can you help others less fortunate than yourself? And remember, this holiday is not just a one-off and Matariki is not just one day, it's a whole period. And also, it's a gift that keeps on giving. So make sure today is just a beginning for you and your whānau and for our country. So let's start new traditions. Really lean into what Matariki can mean for you. And whatever you have planned this weekend, don't worry, we have a jam-packed session for you today as well. Open your doors, open your hearts. Manawa tia a Matariki. Now, shortly, we'll be joining Moana Maniapoto with her guests, Dame Henewehi Mohi, Andre Avasamasanga, and Hana Rafiti Maipi Clark. But right now, let's check out some highlights from this morning's Whangai Ite Hautapu ceremony. Earlier this morning, we experienced for the first time on a live broadcast the sacred ceremony of Whangai Ite Hautapu, led by Professor Sir Pau Temara, alongside Te Matapunenga, a group of Ruanuku trained experts in karakia incantations to make offerings to each star of the Matariki constellation. <laughs> As part of the Whāngai Te Hautapu ceremony, we see various kai related to some of the stars of Matariki, such as crops from the ground, the sea, the trees, as well as fresh water, cooked and offered to the stars and environment, and thanks for the nourishment we've been provided for in the last year. 
Ui. Oh, here I came to my hua the boy Maori. Oh, here I came to my hua the boy Tai. Oh, here I came to the Kutavara Each star is being remembered in the ceremony, and we've been reminded of all their properties to bring us together to acknowledge our environment and all the elements as well as setting our intentions and hopes for the year ahead. Manawa tia, amatariki. Matariki to me is about honouring our ancestors, our tupuna, our people that have gone before us for the sacrifices they made. We are their dreams realised. It is also about whānau, celebrating, connecting together. Globally, we've been through different challenges, and so this is a time to come together and reflect on those as a whānau. And looking ahead, the song is called Ngaruho, and it is about embracing the things that are yet to come. I'm Moana Manyapoto, delighted to be here with you today. 
The arrival of Matariki is a sign for people to gather, to honour those who have passed and push reset on our future. How best can we, all the citizens of Aotearoa New Zealand, celebrate in an appropriate manner? And joining us this morning to discuss the celebration of Matariki are three game changers, all stars in their own right. Dame Hinewehi Mohi, mega rock star and champion of Te not only through her own international recordings, but her Waya to Anthem project. As the co-founder of the amazing Rokatori Music Therapy Centre, she rocks. Andre Afamasanga, for 20 plus years, worked in community, youth, health and education sectors across Australia and Aotearoa. He advocates for the inclusion of rainbow people in religious and Pacific ethnic communities and is a general manager at the New Zealand Human Rights Commission. Hana Rafiti Maipi Clark, a graduate of Te Kura Kaupapa Māori o Rāko Manga Manga. Hana published her first book, Mahina, two years ago at the ripe old age of 17 in an effort to switch her generation onto the place of the maramataka in our lives, its relationship to hauora and mental health. I'm so delighted that you join me today. You all look fantastic because we're celebrating, right? Hi. Now, Hinuihi, did you grow up with Matariki in your life? Kao, kao, not at all. In fact, even my name was quite a biggie in our small primary school and small community in Central Hawke's Bay. So there was um, nothing about um, the, the constellation or, or any reference to Mātauranga Māori at all. Yeah, I know, yeah, same, 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 same. <laughs> um, I, I think I only heard about it when they started running Matariki concerts, you know, it's like, oh, OK, this is cool, I like this. What about you, Hannah? Um, as, as a poeta of uh, Kura Kaupapa Māori, we understood the concepts of Matariki, but not how we have, like, today, um, due to Manawatia and Matariki, uh, with the rangahau of Dr Rangi Matawa and many others as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that your generation are pretty switched on though, like my, <laughs> my daughter, she, she can reel off all the stars and I'm kind of left in the lurch there. So it's, there's an exciting change. Yeah, yeah, for what sure. Ab what about you, Andre? Yeah, um, no, and I think uh, in general, as the son of migrant Samoan parents, I think we had an ambivalent relationship with holidays and events in general. So I think coming from a working class family, sometimes we would celebrate Christmas and make a real big feast and other years would wake up and there was nothing, you know, yeah. and mum and dad would say, you know, so I think over the years we started to learn how to make these holidays ourselves, you know, and make them something that meant something to us, even yeah. though uh, initially they might not have. But uh, in terms of Matariki, no, uh, I know in Samoa they've got Matali'i and I'm really excited, I think, to learn more about Matariki and also what that means for uh, me and other Pacific people. Hmm. So, you know, in the, in the Pākehā New Year, hmm. we all wake up the day after and we go, OK, I'm going to run five hmm. kilometres a day and I'm not going to drink. <laughs> what do you th how do you think we should be celebrating or commemorating Matariki, Hinui? I'd like to think that um, we um, em embrace this kaupapa as something really special and, and unique, to, uh, unique to Aotearoa New Zealand. Even though the constellation has been observed over the centuries by people around the world, mm. um, in Japan, Subaru, in um, Greece and, and that part of the world, play Aves, and um, also in Hawaii. Um, Makali'i and, uh, and our Pacific cousins all referenced uh, the constellations, um, the, the many um, navigational tools that they used um, through, the, through the, the heavens. And I, I guess that um, every whānau has their own way of coming together and celebrating different occasions, but it would be nice to think that we can sort of have that reset that you talk yeah, about and, yeah. and, and come together with an understanding that um, whānau and people are the most important thing. So, so Hana, um, uh, you grew up with the, the kind of the atua and, um, and the, that mātauranga Māori. This Matariki is kind of an acknowledgement of te ao Māori, isn't it? Mm. The Māori world. How do we um, how do we celebrate and in, in, in commemorate in an appropriate manner? Sure. It doesn't sure. involve fireworks yeah. shooting off or people <laughs> flogging stuff yeah, to make yeah, money. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's not. I don't think Matariki should be viewed as the typical 
uh, New Year's that we have. It's something completely different. I see Matariki as a time you're wearing this invisible backpack for the whole year and you're filling it up with the good, the bad, the experiences, different people. Come Matariki time, it's a place to and a time to unload your bag. That's a time that in our hotapu ceremonies, we can tuku our mama, we can tuku our grief, we can acknowledge our taiao and our atua, and then we can karakia and set our intentions to hiwa i te rangi. To me, it's what resets my whole year. It allows me to let my invisible bag be lighter to walk. Oh, that's mm. a cute. Oh, my God. I feel hopeful. I, feel re I felt resetted. <laughs> Is that a word? Is that a word? What about you, Andre? Like, um, what's the potential, do you think, for other communities? I mean, we're, we're all whānau here mm. because, you know, <laughs> Samoa. You know, what do you see the potential for Matariki? Gosh, I, I agree with you. I'd hate for it to just sort of be another holiday or, you know, the version of... New Year's Eve where we look out and go get plastered, not, no judgment. <laughs> but um, I think, you know, I think of my community, Samoan community, and I think of some of our, um, given our social status in New Zealand and some of the um, negative things we face, you know, and, um, and I think, you know, Masiriki would be a really wonderful opportunity to look back and to celebrate. And because we're, I feel sometimes we're in such survival mode, just trying to survive and keep our head above water, that uh, it'd be a really cool time just to, take stock and pause and reflect over all the things that we're grateful for, you know, yes. acknowledge those yeah. who passed away and, and then look forward to like how as communities and family, family that um, we can, yeah, try to um, either improve ourselves or to celebrate what was always there. Mm. So I think we grow up in the context of, you know, in Aotearoa it's really easy to grow up and if you're a brown person, for instance, to think that you're not good enough and it'll be really great in terms of this Indigenous holiday to recognise all the things that are so beautifully inherent about us. So um, I think too is that we, we get really disconnected from the environment oh, and, totally. and from um, the things that are, are really mm. um, grounding. Mm. Um, mm. Papa Tuanuku is very grounding for us and to think about um, Ranginui and, and um, Matariki and and all the um, sort of ethereal and um, very esoteric but um, spiritual things. That you know, it's, it's interesting that you say that, Hanuahi, because I've been, you know, this is a time to reflect on those who have passed. Mm -hmm. And um, Tangi, Tangihana is an amazing space where you see the two worlds come together. You see our um, elders and that being too to do with the with their whakapono, but also with the Christianity. Mm -hmm. And when you talk like that, and Hana knows all about this, it's all about the connections that we have as people connected to the environment, right, Hana? Like our Maori spirituality yeah, is a bit sure. different from Christianity in a way. For sure, for sure. It's about us. Um, like how I like to see it, we need to go with the environment and the rhythms and the natural flows that it has. We're too busy in this day and age um, thinking the environment needs to come to us. Mm. Matariki, it's actually flips the clock and I sit in my haitapu and Matariki and I acknowledge all the different things that have led me to this space, like mm. Māori Petition Act in 1973, um, the pakanga, um, being able to go to Kohangareo and Wharekura, all happened and I can understand that due to me due to all my tupuna sacrifice. Mm. There's lots to, there is a lot lots to celebrate, eh? Hey? Yeah. 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 I mean, celebrate here for starters. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so, what, what do you celebrate? Like, you know, when you look at, I mean, the Matariki Awards, so many young people singing in te reo. Isn't that amazing? Incredible. And and that's something that we love to, to share. Our peoples love to um, come together. The unifying force of music is really powerful and how we connect to others. So that is um, celebratory in itself. Mm. And I think that um, it brings all the elements of, of what's important um, through the storytelling that, that's within music and um, and just the, the, the um, heartbeat and the, um, the rhythm of yeah. music that connects us to. Mm. It's, um, it, it's a wonderful time to, to have a celebration, whatever that looks like for you and your I partner. think it could look like you and Andre doing a song shortly. <laughs> 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 well, we are going to take a short break and we'll be back in a minute with Dame Hiniwahi Mohi, Andre Afamasanga and Hana Rapati Maipi Clark.
Kia ora koutou, ko se tāpū tōku ingoa, this waiata is u kaipō. Nā kua koranga, kātou tōku wairua, nā ngā tōhu o te wā, tōhu wai wai a, ko ngā hurutanga. E aho mai ya na, te ao ma rama, ko te tika te mea pono, e o mea tuku i o, kei ngā mata o te iwi, te i ao to kure o, ngā mana wa e patu, Mato te iwi, te i ao to kure o, e patu ki, negi te ake ake, te hoe ore me tato, te tangi Welcome back. I'm Moana Manyaputu and we're celebrating Matariki with Jame Hinewehi Mohi, Andre Afamasanga and Hana Rāpiti Maipi Clark. Now Matariki is a, is a time when we reflect on those who have passed on and there have been so many tangi uh, even in the last few months. Now one particular tangi presented us with a challenge and that was Moana Jackson who, who laid down some kaupapa and one of them was that Christian practices would not be incorporated into his farewell. I wonder how you felt about that, uh, Henny, where he was down your way? Well, I, I thought that um, Moana's um, uh, instructions for, for what he really wanted for his tangianga as a um, uh, coming together of everyone to celebrate his incredible life, it, it was very special and, um, and um, his choices um, needed to be considered and were really timely, I think, for um, the last couple of years. We've not really been able to grieve mm. our whanau who have passed, friends and family who have left us because um, gatherings have been made so much more difficult, but also um, how we want to be remembered and, um, and particularly for Moana's 
uh, legacy of allowing women to speak on the marae. Mm. So um, now there's a lot of talk it's about... It's down your way too, isn't it? <laughs> it is down my way. Yeah. And um, my cousin actually suggested that I, I, I speak at... Um, at a pōhiri we're having in a couple of weeks and I said, well, just because we're allowed to <laughs> doesn't mean to say that um, we're necessarily quite ready. So uh, as an individual, uh, making, being able to make those decisions is, is really liberating. The quality control. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, Andre, with, with Moana, and I'm, I'm talking about this because Matariki, to me, it represents um, a te ao Māori view and a very indigenous spirituality. Well, can you be strongly indigenous and a Christian at the same time? Yeah, I, I think it absolutely is possible. I think our ancestors um, had those sort of discussions when they were uh, interacting with our colonisers and the, the early missionaries. And I think they sort of negotiated the terms of that, you know, whether it was the appeal of egalitarianism or the familiarity of hierarchical structures. Mm. And what I'm trying to say is that now in today's day and age, that I think there's an opportunity for us to make a Christianity that looks very indigenous, that looks Polynesian, that looks inclusive and looks accepting. And I think one of the things that I find very challenging is that my community and Christian communities talk about love and inclusivity, but for someone like me who's rainbow, that I don't always feel that. Mm. And so I think there's an opportunity for us to grow a brand of Aotearoa, Polynesian type Christianity that looks uh, all of who we are and not having to throw out, uh, you know, part of our identity. Because you, you drew a line. Mm. You were like you were a church pastor, yeah. and then you resigned. Yeah. So, so what was happening there that made you have that decision, yeah. make that decision? Yeah. Uh, so I think for me, I bought the party line that I thought I could change my sexuality, and I think I got to age forty, and I realised that this was not possible. Wow. And I think my parents had passed away, and I think this may sound sad, but I think it made it easier for me to actually come out as gay because I think. I didn't have to worry about that family pressure. I knew my parents mm. loved me, but I knew that their love of the Bible and the church might not allow them to fully accept me. But I got to age 40 and I thought, I really need to uh, look after myself and my own well-being. And it's been the best thing I've ever done, really, mm -hmm. um, to come out uh, not only as gay, but to be a visible example, I suppose, for others and to give them, hopefully, um, some support and to let them know that they can do it as well. And today I have a faith that is wouldn't necessarily call it Christian, but I have a spirituality and, you know, I have an atua that, mm. um, that I love and leads and guides me and allows me to be my full self and I'm very happy about that. Hana, with um, atua and the maramataka, I mean, what's the, what's the place for that now in 2022? We're living in a crazy mm. age where people are attached to their phones, it's mm. consumer driven. Mm. What is the relevance? It's everything, it really is. Uh, maramataka, ngā tā taiwhetu, the different stars and constellations, the way the whenua are just as important notifications in the sky that we can pick up naturally than the notifications on your phone. And that's the number one thing that I'm... I'm not an expert, te kai mm. but I just a messenger stick to our rangatahi to say that this is available for us to tap, tap into a whole nother world. And relations... The relation from maramataka and matariki into religion and into different hahi like, your, like yourself as well. Um, I've been privileged enough and very, very humble to talk at different uh, tangihanga at our marae uh, within Waikato, one of them at Wahi Pa, our ruruhi. And I spoke at this tangi and I was very, very shy, but at the same time I knew that this important message had to be spread across and it was... Um, educating our whānau on the marama face she left on, the star that rose and the atua that came, which was orongonui, which is a peaceful marama, kōpū and pariaro. Pariaro is a staunch uh, star and hinepū kōhurangi. And that's us um, reconnecting to our taha Māori mm. with the paiao. And so I know that those reconnections, they might sound esoteric, but there's a practical kind of application yeah. because I know when things go belly up yeah. in my life mm -hmm. and everything goes wrong, someone goes, oh, that's the marama yeah. Do you ever get that? Um, I mean, the things go belly up. <laughs> anyone raising that? I guess so. Um, I, I, I feel a little inadequate <laughs> with our, our darling Ira Mutsu here talking about such beautiful things and concepts that um, have become clouded and, and foggy. Um, 
uh, over the the generations. They were decolonised. They colonised out of us. That's really. right. That's yeah. right. And mm. and that's why Mātau Ranga Māori is is so powerful because knowledge is power, and it um, empowers us if if we have a better understanding of anything that is important. And I think that's how uh, I would like to feel new, all New Zealanders um, feel about Matariki. Yeah. It's a growing understanding and, and um, knowledge about what its relevance and importance is to all of us. I suppose there'll be a little bit of kickback from those who feel defensive and that, um, you know, there's the odd racist dog whistle out there that, you know, whenever brown people kind of uh, recognise in a certain way, there's this kind of panic that it's just going to carry on. They're going to want everything. <laughs> but could it be a sign, Hannah, that, you know, if there's some acceptance that we are making a change, that we are resetting as yeah, a nation? Yeah, yeah. Well, everyone sees the same stars and same moon in the sky, so it could be relevant to everyone across not only Aotearoa, but um, Te Ao Whanui across the whole world. And, you know, it's a gift, it's a tonga. I'm not marketing to everyone that you need to accept matariki and you need to accept maramataka. But if you do tap into it, it can be a bonus for yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, Andre, what, um, what challenge would you like to throw out to Aotearoa? If we're doing a reset, mm -hmm. what do you think we could... How, how could we reset ourselves as a nation? Yeah, I think um, Matariki provides a really wonderful opportunity to start thinking about that spiritual dimension. And, you know, outside of church, but just think about, like, you know, there's something else to tap into when life gets really hard, you know, or where you feel yourself turning into a bit of a, a bit of a ding-dong, you know, and you sort of need a bit of a reset. I think that spirituality is really helpful for us and just knowing that it's not just ourselves here, that we belong to something bigger. And I think that type of conversation is useful to all uh, New Zealanders, uh, not just people, you know, um, Māori or, or others that have a faith as well. So, And the last thing I would just say is that I would just really encourage religious and cultural communities to be really inclusive. I think if we would have looked at this holiday, like, how can we just include more people and bring more people to the table as opposed to um, some people feeling like they don't belong? Mm. And Hinuihi, you work with um, a lot of people who um, go through the music therapy centres and, I mean, that must be so uplifting for those whānau. Oh. It, That's inclusive, bringing that people is, in, you know. That's right, and it, it is the most wonderful gift to be able to share with someone music and that connection, that expression, the ability to be able to um, connect with others is, is incredible. So for Hine Rogatodi, our daughter, she isn't able to speak, but she can vocalise and, and certainly express herself through music. So to be able to share that with others who have similar challenges in their life is, has been one of the most wonderful things that I've, I've been uh, privileged to be a part of. So what's your big challenge to the nation? Mm. I think embrace everything that is is um, is ours and and this is ours this is our time to shine yeah. and to sparkle like uh, the stars in the heavens <laughs> and to our star what's your big challenge to everybody um, to acknowledge to acknowledge that our stars are there to guide us because if we listen to our stars if we actually pay attention to the tohu that it's telling us it could help ourselves out even more um, so yeah that's my challenge my weddle Kia ora, Hannah. Thank you for uplifting us with your beautiful kōrero. Thank you, Andre, for all your efforts as an advocate and a champion. And Hinawihi, love you dearly. Thank you for all your mahi. And, um, you know, this is going to be a great year. I'm feeling it. Are you feeling it? Righty, here we go. Thank you for staying with us and we welcome you to a new era. Uh, have a great matariki. Kia ora and a great year. Hey, kia ora, my name is Louis Baker and this is my song, Te Utu o Te Aroha.
We're live in the beautiful Rongo Marairoa here at Te Papatongarewa, the Museum of New Zealand on the waterfront in Te Whanganui Atara, Wellington. This is a special day indeed for all New Zealanders. Here at Rongo Marairoa, we're hosting a virtual marae as well with all of you who are joining us on lots of different platforms who all decided that our first Matariki holiday was a great time to work together as well. Manawa tia a Matariki. Happy New Year. It's been a big and a tough year for many of us, so let's wish that year farewell and let's start afresh. Matariki manako nui. Matariki brings great hope. and welcome to this very special day. I'm Stacey Morrison, no māua ko mātai, te maringa nui. We have really cherished uh, this very special pleasure and privilege to be hosting today's historic broadcast. A lot of people are really resonating with what Supo mm. Temara said, yes. it's a moment in time. So as a parent, I personally love that Matariki is already a natural part of the lives of our tamariki, unlike me growing up, but children all over our country are now learning and literally singing the praises of Matariki. Kia ora, I'm Matai Smith. What she said. <laughs> <laughs> now, Stacey, I know my whānau will have been up before the break of dawn, because as you know, up in Gizzi, te mm -hmm. Fitzy, we're the first to welcome the sun anywhere in the world. And hopefully the fires will have been lit right up the coast and the hangi will be steaming. What about your way weather? 
over your way, Rotorua, where the steam always rises. Yes, some things are consistent in Rotorua. <laughs> Hoi anō, ahakoa kai hea koe. No matter where you are, we hope that you have loved this day and this moment in time and you're getting excited about the year ahead. Mm, hi kaka ana te ngako. Now, as previously mentioned, we're here at Te Papa who have had a long association with this kaupapa. Take a look at this. Matariki is important to Te Papa because at the heart of it, it recognises the deep mana, vitality, integrity of Matariki Māori, our indigenous knowledge traditions. I remember not long after Te Papa Tongariwa opened in February 1998, our first iwi residence was Te Atiawa Taranaki Whanui and the late Tiru Wharehoka. He shared his kōrero and, and his knowledge pertaining to Puanga and the dawning of the Māori New Year. And, uh, it made us think about the significance of, of, uh, of Matariki and consequently uh, took a paper and a, and a kaupapa to our leadership team about why we should be celebrating and acknowledging it. Cliff Whiting, our first kaihautu, it resonated straight at us. And within the next two years, we made a commitment uh, that we would celebrate Matariki every year. We've had 24 years of eight different iwi and this um, diversity and perspective of matariki, puanga, maramataka Māori and gathering all of that together, which is sort of eventuated in our digital platform and all the information that we share on our website, mana whenua. They're always so generous in letting our iwi exhibition partners from across the mutu share their mātauranga at that time. A highlight for me is the growth that has occurred over the last 20 years. So from when we first started celebrating Matariki at Te Papa, you know, it started as a really small occasion amongst staff and it's grown into this huge program. We've really learned what's worked well, what hasn't worked, and expanding on our learning as kaimahi, but also for our audiences that come into Te Papa. A kaupapa which has been really close to my heart has been the Taikura Kaumatu Kapahaka and uh, we've celebrated that for well over 10 years. The nannies and kuros, so beautiful, really wholesome, and it's just awesome to give them the value that they deserve. That's definitely a Matariki highlight. This is the first time that we've had a physical experience or exhibition for our visitors at Te Papa. Of course, over the years, there's been many learning programs for schools in Kura, many public programs and events, but this is the first time you know, we're marking it with a physical experience. I think this exhibition is particularly uh, important because it's representing the first Indigenous holiday for Aotearoa. It's the first time that you know Aotearoa will be pausing for Mataranga Māori and being the National Museum of Aotearoa, it's, it was important to us as an organisation to have something on the floor for our visitors to experience, uh, to help them understand how we should be celebrating this public holiday. My hopes for Te Papa is that now that we've reached this milestone of Matariki being a public holiday, that we can expand on that and um, look at the Maramataka Māori as a whole. And I think it's just sort of trying to keep the momentum up, make sure that we continue to uplift the kaupapa any way we can. I hope that Matariki is taken into every whānau, into every family in Aotearoa. And it's a way that we can understand the history of where we've come from, but just importantly, as we care for, caring for the future is actually honouring and respecting our whenua, our histories throughout Aotearoa and Rekohu. Welcome back to Te Whanganui Atara. As you can see, these beautiful shots of Wellington as we celebrate our first public holiday for Matariki. And one of the ways that we're doing that today on this broadcast, going around lots of different platforms, is with Waiata. And katika hoki, that is a great thing to do. That's why I have grabbed our musical director, Tama Waipara, always a man on the spot, to speak to us about the place of Waiata when we speak about Matariki. 
Matia Matariki, Hi. Um Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I'm really lucky to be here working on this kaupapa, but the, the way Waiata holds our stories and provides clues for people, you know, it's, mm. it's the means into our reo, it's the means into all our histories, our recorded knowledge, our matauranga, and so it makes sense that today is framed by Waiata and, and our beautiful kai Waiata, our manuti ori ori, who are already um, working in that space and unpacking what matariki means to them, if you think about, you know, all of the, the ways Waiata is moving people across the country, it's across the world. And although we're talking about the stars, Waiata has the ability to fuck off anywhere to bring us back down to earth, right? It's a, a lot in terms of our processes as well, no? Mm. And I think, um, you know, when you when you hear these performers today, you know, I think of, of Seth Harpu, who um, has a song called Ngaru Ho, which is, is about um, that, that reset, about that um, time to reflect and set new purpose. And, you know, of course, Maisie, who has a whole album, Ngā Mata o Te Ariki Tawhiri Mātea, which unpacks all of these kōrero around Matariki, but, but also with the purpose that our tamariki, our rangata, tahi, all our future generations can learn the kōrero, but learn it in a way that um, isn't just, you know, kōrero, isn't just the academic side of it, it actually opens it out through the arts. And I see crowds around the country singing in Te Reo Māori as well. There is the Ngaru Ho, the real new wave, isn't there? Yeah, and you know, you've got Te Kingi Raiona um, debuting in Auckland, um, Rob Ruha, who just uh, premiered with the Auckland Philharmonic Orchestra, Kapo Kao, um, Te Karehana Gardner Toy, or Teeks, with the NZSO, both on the same night. Um, I think we're just so lucky to be at a time where, because of the work that many people before us, like Hinewehi Mohi, like Dame Hinewehi Mohi, like Moana Maniapoto, like Fili Mako Black, uh, like Ruya Perahama, um, Brannigan Carr, all these incredible kaiwaiata who paved the way here in Melbourne for us to sort of step into those spaces and keep moving things forward. And I think I'm just so excited by the breadth and the diversity of talent because there's so many different flavours and incredible musicians that I think people are going to have a really, hopefully, enjoy the bounty of that kai today. Tēnā rawa atukwe, you should include yourself in there as well. Tēnā tātou, manuatia. Amateriki. Tēnā koutou katoa, ko se tāpū tōku ingoa. This next waiata is called Fai Ora. It's about appreciating what we have and living in the moment. Kia ora. Never, never let it go. 
If the powers that be start a world war And they come for you and I What would you do with your hand on the trigger? Reconsider or oh, blow Fire your love So what is Matariki? Or who is Matariki? Matariki is a star cluster that rises in midwinter. Because of the season change and their deep connection to the environment, many Māori saw the rising of Matariki as a sign of the new year. So where is Matariki? The best time to see the star cluster is just before sunrise. In Aotearoa, Matariki is northeast. First look east to the line of three stars that make up Orion's belt, or Tautoru. Then, follow the direction of Tautoru to the left until you see a tiny cluster of stars. This is Matariki. Matariki can be seen from all around the world. The Middle East, Asia, Australia, Europe, North and South America. Different cultures have their own names and stories attached to the cluster. Across Europe, Matariki is known as Pleiades. Some refer to them as the Seven Sisters. Some associate Matariki with death and mourning, while some connect the stars to agriculture. In Japan, Matariki is known as Subaru, which means gathering together. Many people around the world have been guided by stars, from astrology to ocean navigation and measuring time. Since ancient times, people have looked to stars as signs to connect them with events here on Earth. Christians believe the Star of Bethlehem was a miraculous sign to mark the birth of Christ. The Bible says, there will be signs in the sun, moon and stars on the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. Many cultures believed that the positions of the stars were their creator's way of telling stories. So it seemed only natural to recognize patterns in the sky, give them names, and tell stories about them. So what's our story here in Aotearoa? The word Matariki is often referred to as the eyes of God. Mata meaning eyes and Ariki meaning God. Many Māori believe when they pass on, our spirits ascend to the sky and we become stars. Some consider Matariki to be the mother star surrounded by her children. Some say she has six children. Some say she has eight. Each star is connected to our environment. Waiti and Waita are the stars watching over our water and all the kind that live within it. One for the fresh water like our rivers and lakes and the other for our oceans. 
Tupuanuku and Tupuarangi look after our kai that grow below and above the land, our veggie gardens and all that live within our trees and the sky. Waipunarangi and Ururangi are the weather stars, guardians of the rain and wind. And the final two stars are our protectors, Pōhutsukawa and Hiwaiterangi. One protects the memories of our loved ones who have passed away, while the other protects our wishes. This is the Matariki Whānau. This first song is a waiata called Tera Matariki Na Dame Hinewehi Mohi. Tera Matariki 
This next waiata is a song called Rangatira. Kai 
Quem fanca vai teta é o tequiri. Tem porra ou tem ira. Conte fanca tão que ia. Conte com a ou tem manaua. Canto a maira, retão a tucuíro. Na tema tua. Materinha mata tica. É puta ai, teta na ta. Kawaiata Oh, tau ke e hoa ngā mihi ki te korokoro tu i rā ki a Ria Hall, kā napa napa mai rā e te whetu glistening from across the... Can I just say that you didn't even have a rehearsal? That is just natural talent. And today we're being entertained with history and haka waiata and wonderful kōrero because it is the beginning of a whole new chapter in our calendars thanks to the maramataka, the lunar calendar and the way our celebrations are evolving is something we can all be part of and I believe to be proud of as well. Now so far this morning we've heard many words of wisdom from our panel guests and in this next instalment with John Campbell at the helm I'm sure we're in for plenty more. Kei Aque John. No mai, haere mai, ki te taumata kōrero, tēnā koutou katoa, uh, manawatea a matariki. Welcome everyone, wherever you are watching or listening, welcome. I am John Campbell and we have special guests. Thank you for being with us at this special time and on this special holiday unique to us. Picking an astronomical theme, I thought I might introduce our special guests from the oldest star right behind me, right beside me, magnificently to the youngest in the centre. So, Dr. Hare Williams, ki te rangatira tēnā koe. Tēnā koe, John. Uh, a man who has been such a force for good in this country, a leader, a teacher before many of us understood we needed to be taught, a writer, an artist, a truly pioneering broadcaster, such a passionate advocate for Rea Māori. Kia ora rawatu. Thank you so much for joining us. We're really Hello. delighted to have you here. Me too. Hmm, thank you. Then uh, at the other end of our panel, a man without whom I do not think we would be sitting here today celebrating Matariki on a national holiday, Professor Rangi Matamua, the first Māori to win a Prime Minister's Science Prize Fellow of the Royal Society Te Aparangi, globally acclaimed astronomer. Kia ora rawa atu Rangi. Welcome. Future. It's so lovely to see you. Yeah, it's wonderful to be here. Yeah, thank you for coming. And our youngest star, maybe our version of Hiwa Itarangi. She is a Samoa New Zealander climate change activist, co founder of Climate Change Group for the Culture, a brilliant, celebrated, award winning writer, including poetry, a glorious orator, and she's now studying law and environmental science at AUTI Angela Fili Fipulwai Tapuai. Thank you so much for being here. Fafa Taiteli Lava Fili. Fafa Taiteli Lava John. So nice to see the three of you on this really special day. And you have a karakia for us, Dr. Williams. <coughs> Ite tima tanga kote kore kote pu kote well kote ahunga kunga fetu kumata reki. Can you translate that for us? In the beginning, there was no light, only the emptiness of silence, and then the stars appeared, and mata reki came. Hmm. Thank you. This is about light, isn't it, Rangi? This is about light. And you have been telling us about this light for a very long time, but some of the rest of us have been slow on the uptake. What does it mean that we are seeing this together at long last? You're right, it is about light and it's about people. I think the fundamental principles of Matariki are about remembering those that we've lost along the journey to become who we are and the lessons and the legacy they leave us. 
It's about celebrating who we are today, who we are presently and all the wonderful things that make us who we are. And then it's also about celebrating who we want to be tomorrow. So it's about looking forward and celebrating all the diversity and the flavours and the wonderful different approaches and understandings that bring us together, but celebrating it as one people, as one nation. And as that star cluster rises, because they are different stars that slightly in different spaces and places, representing different things, but they rise as a single entity in the morning. That's what they did this morning, and it's a symbol to us. We come from different places around the world and across the globe, mm. but today we rise as a nation, you know, together. And that's really, for me, the essence of what Matariki is and that idea of it being light, enlightenment for all of us. Hmm. That's a beautiful way of seeing it. Thank you, Philly. I want to come to you in a sec, because when we talk about looking forward, you're going to be somebody who leads us into our future, a prospect I'm very excited about. So stand by, but Hare, I want to bring you in first because you had a beautiful kuya, didn't you? When you were about, I think about seven years old and she told you you were going to be a teacher. But did you ever imagine we would be where we are on this special day? Not really. My kuya, Waide Mana, she prophesied that one day you'll become a teacher, one day you'll become a doctor, one day you'll become a lawyer, one day you might even become one of those fancy politicians. And I took that on to be myself. And in later life, it was really a prophecy about my children. My son is a doctor, my daughter is a teacher, my other daughter is a, a, a member of parliament and she's also a lawyer. So the fulfilment of the policy, uh, the, the prophecy is really within my children. But this is also a message of possibility, isn't it? Going back to what Rangi was talking about, right? This is what we are capable of at our best and most inclusive. And Philly, I want to bring you in here. And you did a stunning speech, uh, waiting water, uh, not fire or ice, but water. And you were talking about climate change. You said this isn't a story of destruction, it's a story of creation. And in a way, that's what Matariki is too, a story of creation, right? So let's pick up on what Rangi was talking about. Tell us about the future you hope for on this special day. I see Matariki as an opportunity for not only we as a country to honour our Indigenous people, but for every settler on this land to know the privilege that they hold and to use that mm -hmm. to be able to fix the injustices that we have in our system. Um, as we move forward into the future, we have to look towards the past to see the wisdom mm -hmm. we need to take with us. Mm -hmm. And so I think Matariki is a celebration of that, is an honouring of a lot of things that I don't think the mainstream, quote unquote mainstream in this country honours enough. And so it's a beautiful, beautiful development. Um, and I hope that it only continues to, to deepen and to um, become even better in the future. So is it a challenge for us? Is Matariki a challenge, Philly, do you think, for us to do better? Definitely. Um, I think it would be performative for people to just make it a holiday but not honour mm. the deep cultural meaning that comes with Matariki. Um, it is not simply something that can be commercialised or commodified. It is something that has to be honoured in its true form. And for that, we look to our Indigenous people. So that means we have to honour them. You uh, have Indigenous people nodding on either side of you, Rangi. I want <laughs> to bring you in here and pick up on what Fili was saying. You know, my daughter once said a beautiful thing. She said, Dad, a candle that lights another candle doesn't go out. And I, I never knew whether she meant that both candles are burning or that your flame burns on mm. through someone else's mm. candle after mm. you've gone. Lovely. Either way, yeah. the meaning is beautiful though, right? Mm. And I feel like Matariki is a whole lot of lighting of candles, that this is all our light burning. So what do you say to the people who say, this is not my holiday, nothing to do with me? What do you say to them? There isn't a single person in this country at this present moment who do not descend from people that looked into the cosmos and into the stars and used them to tell time, mm. to navigate, to understand when to plant, when to harvest, when to celebrate. We've all done it. And universally, Matariki or the Pleiades has been used since early humans walked on the earth. There is a 17,000 year old cave painting in Southern France, which is Matariki. There is a star 
dug out of the ground in Germany. It's two and a half thousand years old. It's Matariki. The first astronomical reference ever is from China. They talk about the blossom stars. They are Matariki. From North America to South America to Africa, it was all used to either tell time, to celebrate, to understand the change of season, and our Pacific relations right across Polynesia. Mm. They all have Matariki. And when we arrived, we imported that. Mm. And we landed here and we thought, wow, look, it reappears in the midwinter. We can use it to mark our uh, Māori New Year and also to celebrate who we are. And I think right across the world, every place, it's connected to identity. Mm -hmm. And yeah, what yeah, we're yeah. doing mm. is we are forging a national identity, a pillar for our mm. ongoing national identity based on these values that speak to the best parts of who we are as people. Love, sharing, kindness, uh, aroha, uh, and, you know, being so proud to, of who we are, who we are individually, but who we are as a collective. Kia to that. I think that's the beautiful description of Matariki. Mm. Makes me feel proud to be part of it. Howdy, Williams. I want to pick up uh, He Kuaka, uh, a poem from Words of Akamatua, one of your poems, a beautiful poem. It's about a godwit, a lone godwit lifts. Others rise to take wing and follow, to circle and once in flight to soar. Others rise to follow. Tell me who we're following. And I think this is picking up on what Feely was talking about before. Tell us the shoulders we are standing on today, the centuries of people who have been here before us and looked to these stars. For me, <clears throat> my tupuna, Tutakangaho of uh, Tuhoe, he shared the information with Elston Best. And I'm grateful to Elston Best for recording it. When was that? When are we talking about? Oh, the 1920s. Amazing. Uh, earlier than that, but Tutakangaho imparted the wealth of the information that we're subscribing to now. So Matariki to me is the time of revivalism. The act is about revivalism. And I think when it gets to this point, I never really envisaged that I'd ever live this long mm -hmm. to realise this was going to happen. And, and uh, I had a stint at Waikato University as a research fellow, and I was asked to give a talk on Matariki, John Rangiho from Tuhoe. He said, give a talk about your tupuna, Tutakangahu and Elston Beast. And I did. So that was in 1978 when I did that talk for the winter lectures at Waikato. 1978. Almost 50 years ago. Wow. But we're going to talk after the break. And Feely, I want to talk about what you hope for from older people like us. How can we make your future better? Stay with us on this special day. We will be back with, back with Hari, Rangi and Fili after the break. And we are the Tuari Brothers. Ya, 
So delighted to have your company. I said before the break that we're going to start with you, Philly, and I just want to pick up on a line. I'm a huge fan of Philly's writing and your speech making, and one of these beautiful lines that you used, our ancestors fought for us to be here. And it's a reminder that this is your ancestors' place in the world too, right? Mm -hmm. And that they were looking at the same stars hundreds of years ago. That's beautiful. Um, simply put, it is beautiful. And when I think about what I would like to see um, from elders, from adults, from those with wisdom to bestow upon the youth, I would love to see more empathy and more understanding, mm. especially during times like these, because like I think everyone has touched on before, Matariki is about celebrating. It's not our differences, it's the different values that we bring to the table. It's not what separates us. And there is no best culture, there's no best Community, I think that when we are engaging in empathy and what that looks like in action, no matter what institution you're from, no matter what field you're in, um, when you're teaching that to your children, I think it means our community is getting stronger and we're not just focusing on ourselves as individuals. Do you feel that? Do you feel that's happening? Um, I feel in some ways, I feel like the pushbacks on both sides is very strong. Um, and I feel that there are a lot of amazing elders out here who relentlessly believe in our youth. Mm. And I'm very grateful for them because, as we say, our ancestors fight for us to be here. So it's about continuing that cycle and making sure that it doesn't end and giving it back to the earth, <laughs> which connects with Matariki as well. Mm -hmm. Rangi, I see you nodding as Feli speaks. Yeah, no, it just when she speaks, she just has this... Um, youthful voice, but it's just full of such old wisdom. You know, I'm just like, wow. <laughs> At 19, I couldn't decide what I was wearing for day, you know, what shoes I was putting on my feet, let alone what I was eating. And he's fairly next to me just dropping these knowledge bombs. It's just incredible. Can I, can I come in then? When did you begin the journey to become Rangi Matamua, astronomer? What did that journey consist of? I never realised that I was part of a... Um, of a family that had an astronomical past. Yes, true. Yeah. The Koroua here was talking about Alton Vesta, now uh, Tipuna Tutakangaho. 
another one of his um, Māori friends from, from our community, from the community I come from, Duatahu, now was my ancestor, Te Koko. In the late 1800s, he was with Best, who was surveying the road through our community. And he was a um, tohunga kōkōrangi, or a Māori astronomy expert. And um, Best gave to him a ledger and an early nautical star map. And, uh, from 1898 till 1933, him and his son recorded a 400-page manuscript on astronomy. And it's just so detailed and rich, and a lot of the uh, information and the knowledge I share comes from that individual. Okay. Now, that was handed to my grandfather, who put it in a cupboard for 50 years, because he didn't want anything to do with it, but it found itself, its way to me when I was about Philly's age two years or three years ago. And uh, <laughs> so it came to me and has been the cornerstone of my entire life since How I've proud seen. would they be of you now, Rangi? Well, I'd like to think, you know, you know, at this day and as we celebrate Matariki, you know, because we do reflect on those that we've lost and the legacy they leave us. And what Philly's talking about is a legacy. Mm. We are all have thrust upon us the legacies of our our forebearers, and they did some extraordinary, amazing things. Yeah, and there is no reason that we shouldn't rise to the challenge and do exactly the same. Because our responsibility is to make our descendants proud of us, right? Exactly. I want Dr. Harry Williams to pick up on a poem of yours. I'm a, a big fan of your writing. E pi, e pa. That's uh, a waiata for a television program. Our richness is each other. Yeah. That's a beautiful line. Our richness is each other. That goes back to what Rangi was talking about before. That goes back to our fairly sense of what we share. We have to remember that, don't we? Because sometimes we forget it and we become angry about the other. You're saying our richness is mm -hmm. each other. Yeah, I think difference and change are two of the, two of the elements that enriches our lives. And as we, you know, just as a drop of water contains the mysteries of life, a river is part of the drop of water on the top of a mountain. And so that life that's generated by one drop of water that Hone Tufare describes, you know, it washes over me, rain. And, and, and to me, the elements of water, the taonga of water is preserved by matariki and preserved for, for us to enjoy. Before the program started, I was talking to Hari and he told me about the walk to school and as a little boy you would walk to school speaking Reo Māori, you would get to school and stop speaking it. And the message was that you had to defer to something bigger and better, which is an outrageous thing to tell a young person. What is it like to see today as a national holiday, to see Matariki acknowledged and celebrated I didn't think that I'd live this long to see it actually come into legislation. But walking to school was certainly a challenge, a long way to walk to school. The children around the Ohiwa Harbour walked about eight or nine miles, some of them. So they chatted in Te Reo, they told stories, they swore in Te Reo <laughs> and, and, and told sexy stories. <laughs> 60 stories. But once they got to the school gate, that was the close. No more. We spoke neither English nor Māori. You didn't speak at all? No. So today is your voice, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, I, I remember those kids with a great potential. You know, Matariki is about the potential in each individual, each group, each person. A child... Uh, uh, an elder is, is simultaneously a teacher and a learner. But the word learner has a primary place in Māori culture. I, I want to pick up on that because, Philly, I feel like you are both a teacher and a learner. You are still learning, literally, because you're at university. But every time I spend time in your company, I feel I've learned something. So you teach me. Do you have a sense of obligation? And I'm not giving you, I hope, an undue weight, Philly. But what is it that you want to achieve that you might think about on this special day? I think that a lot of it has to do with, in some ways, 
it feels like basic survival for our communities. The, but when you think about our worldwide scale, when I say taking care of the earth, it also means um, fighting against climate change. It means making sure that our islands are livable. It means mm. um, seeing our Pacific identity as not sectioned off places, but mm. one that is unified. Mm. And these all seem like massive movements and massive goals to wish for. But when I think about it, it all comes down to just survival, but also being able to live um, the joyous and happy lives that our children deserve and that our descendants deserve. And they deserve to grow up knowing that their legacy is one of beauty and not one of, to paraphrase, destruction. Mm. And those are the things that I feel obligated in fighting for because I know how hard it was fighting for those same things mm -hmm. in every generation. And so that same fight goes on no matter how old you are. The learning never stops, um, not when you leave high school or anything, it just keeps going. Mm. Boy, I just think that if you shape the world, it will be a better world for you. Kia ora. Yeah, yeah. Kia ora. Uh, Rangi, I wanted to give you the last word because I didn't really understand terribly much about Matariki and then I started uh, being on programs that were interviewing you, listening to podcasts you were doing, reading, writing you were doing. So let's celebrate this day and all you have done to make us understand it better, Rangi. Matariki, again, is, is uh, like I say, it's about people. It's about us. We're all Matariki. You know, we're all connected. Everyone that's here, we all connect to those stars and they are symbols that really encourage us you know, to, to be aware of our environment. Right? They're connected directly to earth, forest, freshwater, saltwater, weather. Mm. All of those things are bound up in Matariki. The dead of the year are connected to Matariki. The promise of new life and a new season is Matariki. But it's so much greater than, than, than just the physical. It's that symbolic identity. It's, the, you know, wanting to, to reach for the stars, literally, <laughs> and be the best that we can yeah. be. One of the things I'm so proud of is that Māori are sharing this with the nation. That's what we've done. We're sharing this, and it's not just a Māori thing, because these stars, we brought them from the islands of, of the Pacific, and they are shared right across the globe. But today, we're sharing this with the nation in the hope that it will bind us together with those principles and values. You know, we are Matariki, and I think that's encapsulated with that saying that you started with, John. Manoatia Matariki. Manoatia, exalt, celebrate Matariki and all it represents, and will we hope it will be for the future. So, nui te mihi kia koe, John. Kia ora, kia ora, John. Kia ora, that was absolutely beautiful. We can all rise like these stars Kia and we can all shine our light on the world. Thank you so much, the three of you. Kia ora, it has been such a pleasure to be in your company. We really, really appreciate it. And mana watia a matariki. Kia ora. Welcome back to Rongo Marairoa at Te Papa Tongarewa, the Museum of New Zealand on the waterfront here in Te Whanganui Atara, Wellington. This is a watershed moment. A lot of effort has gone into this day, not just here in Te Whanganui Atara, Wellington, but certainly across Aotearoa. There's a new light emanating from those stars, a new spirit of openness and inclusion. And this holiday is, as we've said, not a one-off. This is now an annual event, a day every year to celebrate and recalibrate, a day to remember and reinvigorate our commitment to ourselves, our people and our nation. The potential and the opportunity of Matariki has been all around us today and our wishes to hiwai te rangi and the recognition of hardship and loss in the last year and in the joy of just being together, reflecting together and looking to our environment, our beautiful whenua and to our stars for inspiration. Manawa tia a Matariki.
No mai hoki mai e we welcome back to our capital city, Te Whanganui Atara, live from Te Papa Tongarewa. It's Matariki Day, a brand new public holiday and a brand new opportunity for all New Zealanders to discover and embrace the wisdom of the ages and enjoy the waiata of the past and present. Let's celebrate this new era in our evolution and hopefully set an example for nations right across the world. It's something that us Kiwis are certainly good at. And hope you're having a little bit of a kani kani we with your cup one. of tea. And we are coming to you live. As we say, we just saw in our whare, Te Honoki Hawaiki, the creative natives. And we're so, so happy to be with you today. Because Stacey Morrison, Toko Ingwa, it's not even lunchtime. I've had a huge <laughs> day already. There's been depth and spirituality, connection to our environment and also to each other. Gratitude, 
and also hope for the year ahead because it has been a tough 12 months. Mm. And I hope that in the spirituality of the karakia this morning, that it gave some comfort for anyone who's mourning loved ones especially. There's more waiata to lift our hearts coming up and more of the goodness that is Matariki. Kia ora, Matai Smith. Matariki, it's not all about the kai, although that is very important Hi. to us. Uh, it's not all about the music, although that's crucial. It's also a time to reflect and take stock of the year just past. It's a time to plan, a time to plant, a time to look upward, a time to look inward, a time to reach outward, a time to take care of yourself, your whanau and your world. So let's take a look back at some of the special moments from this morning's Hautapu. If we choose to connect with the stars, the stars can help connect us. Now that Matariki is officially a national holiday, it's important to understand that it's for all of us to celebrate. So what is Matariki? Why is it significant? And how can we all celebrate it? When I think about the new year, the thing that connects us to the rest of the world is it's the signal to tell us it's now time to recalibrate, to refresh. Matariki is one out of the many things people don't know about Te Ao Māori. Celebrating Matariki as a national holiday excites me. This is a positive outlook and pathway we can go into learning more. So what is Matariki? Or who? Is Matariki. Matariki is a star cluster that rises in midwinter. Because of the season change and their deep connection to the environment, many Māori saw the rising of Matariki as a sign of the new year. So where is Matariki? The best time to see the star cluster is just before sunrise. In Aotearoa, Matariki is northeast. First look east to the line of three stars that make up Orion's belt, or Tautoru. Then, follow the direction of Tautoru to the left until you see a tiny cluster of stars. This is Matariki. Matariki can be seen from all around the world. The Middle East, Asia, Australia, Europe, North and South America Different cultures have their own names and stories attached to the cluster. Across Europe, Matariki is known as Pleiades. Some refer to them as the Seven Sisters. Some associate Matariki with death and mourning, while some connect the stars to agriculture. In Japan, Matariki is known as Subaru, which means gathering together. Many people around the world have been guided by stars, from astrology to ocean navigation and measuring time. Since ancient times, people have looked to stars as signs to connect them with events here on Earth. Christians believe the Star of Bethlehem was a miraculous sign to mark the birth of Christ. The Bible says, there will be signs in the sun, moon and stars on the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. Many cultures believed that the positions of the stars were their creator's way of telling stories. So it seemed only natural to recognize patterns in the sky, give them names, and tell stories about them. So what's our story here in Aotearoa? The word matariki is often referred to as the eyes of God. Mata meaning eyes and ariki meaning God. Many Māori believe when they pass on, our spirits ascend to the sky and we become stars. Some consider matariki to be the mother star surrounded by her children. Some say she has six children. Some say she has eight. Each star is connected to our environment. 
Waiti and Waita are the stars watching over our water and all the kind that live within it. One for the fresh water like our rivers and lakes, and the other for our oceans. Tupu Anuku and Tupu Arangi look after our kind that grow below and above the land, our veggie gardens and all that live within our trees and the sky. Waipunarangi and Ururangi are the weather stars, guardians of the rain and wind. And the final two stars are our protectors, Pohutsukawa and Hiwaiterangi. One protects the memories of our loved ones who have passed away, while the other protects our wishes. This is the Matariki Fano. If Matariki has such a long history, why are a lot of us only learning about Matariki now? The reason why people uh, don't know much about it is simply because when you've got different symbols around the country recognising and remembering a dying race, that encourages us to be embarrassed of who we are and our culture. And as a result of that, you lose knowledge. I was raised in the 80s when there was a slow revival of the culture. It's taken a good 40 years of renaissance just to get here. And all of the hard work of the last 40 years has enabled us to start to be proud again. Hede Hakatauanaka <laughs> E kore tai e te au pūtai au pākeha te tiro tiro ne. Te mātauranga te Māori e honoa ngā me o te rangi, te whenua ki te moana. E haka hoki ana hoki e mātau e tahi o ngā hakoranga nei. E hea hai ki a tupu mai wa tātou nei mokopuna, wa tātou nei tamariki e a mōhio ki te tiro tiro i te tai au ne. Pānga i tia te māramatanga ki ngā uri, Matariki rises in midwinter, a time of seasonal change. It's cold, so the land is at its most unproductive and the harvest season must end. What more does this star cluster tell us at this time of year? Traditionally, all of our new years, we're in winter, because the, the moment that things get warm, we're then moving into work. And so summer is our biggest time to work, because you go out and get all of the food that you need to get while you then rest in the winter. You stay home during the winter, you go all around the world, all the big battles around the world, very rarely were they in winter, and if they were, the people who went to attack would often lose. You don't hear any stories of our tūpuna going into big battles in winter simply because it makes sense to stay home. Ngāti Rangi have come home to learn about ancient traditions and how they can celebrate their new year. Winter is a time for scholarship. It's a time to stay together, to reflect, to wānanga. Mai 
I live a long way away from home and it's, it's hard sometimes being away, but coming home is really grounding. It's just a really warm home feeling. And I know that when I have a baby and they're brought up here, they're like, this is the Māori New Year. This is, it's normalised. You know, we don't have to fight for it or we don't have to explain our own culture. It's just a part of this land now, as it should have been from the beginning. Māori would look to the stars to predict the upcoming year's harvest. If the stars in the cluster are clear and bright, it would be a warm and bountiful season. However, if Matariki appeared hazy, this would be a sign of a cold and difficult season. Or if certain stars were shining brighter than others, like if Tupuanuku was shining the brightest, then you'd know that you would have a successful Kumara harvest. There's a lot of revival happening right now of old knowledge. Traditionally, each season had a reason. Our culture's a food culture. That's just an aspect of humanity, is the importance of food. Autumn was preparation for the cold months. Winter was all about wānanga. Then you go into spring, and that then tells you, start to prepare your garden for the kumara. I've been doing a bit of work with somebody who works um, for the Met Service, and so just aligning, oh, this is what I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be a cold winter, and it's going to be short. And she goes, how do you know? And I says, oh, well, I was just reading the stars and what the stars were telling me. And that just gives me a really good read on what's going to happen for the next season as well as for the next year. But we all see different stars depending on where we live. All around the world, the landscape is different. The conditions are different. So naturally, you adapt to your conditions. The same applies here around Aotearoa, Every tribe is surrounded by a different environment. So every tribe has different traditions. Not all tribes see Matariki as a sign of the new year. This may be because in their environment, they can't see Matariki and other stars are more prominent. Puanga, also known as Rigel, is a star that many Māori see as a sign of the new year. It's higher and much brighter than Matariki, and it rises around the same time too. Puanga is celebrated all around Aotearoa, but mainly on the west coast, far north, parts of the South Island and the Chathams. Some signs were read differently, but most tribes knew of both Matariki and Puanga. Some people say, oh no, we're Puanga, oh no, we're Matariki. What's really important from my perspective is there's no competition. You read whatever you read, depending on where you are. Puanga is a, a key star for us of the west coast coming into the central volcanoes. And she's important simply because we get a better read from her than we do from Matariki. Traditionally, in the mountain here, to prepare for the cold months, we would go down to the Whanganui River where it's slightly warmer. And so because we were down the river, you can't see Matariki and you can only see Puanga. Traditionally, Māori New Year celebrations included ritual fires, offerings, farewelling the dead, celebrating life and preparing for the future. Ngāti Rangi have revived their traditional New Year's celebration.
ki reira tuku atu ai ki a tākiri atu a iwe tu i te rangi. Um, I lost my mum a while ago. And it's uh, time to celebrate who they are through who we are and to let go, but to still remember. Because if you don't talk about them, you lose them. And that's what the fire, and that's about. And that's why when we reflect on Waiata and Karakia, you feel their presence in it. I'm not normally a spiritual person, but I have never really experienced anything like that. It was something really special, I'll, something I'll definitely never forget. This is my first time being on a marae. I feel extremely privileged. It's so much more than reading about it in a book or on a website. As a scientist, Western science has a lot to learn from Indigenous knowledge. A lot of this knowledge has been here for a long time. It's just maybe been slightly ignored by Western science. You know, and coming from science and as a Westerner, that's, you know, I think that's quite significant. Puanga is a part of our journey. It's a part of a new beginning. Matariki allows us to share who we are, our stories, from our point of view. We're telling our story, not someone else telling it for us. here in Aotearoa typically associate New Year's celebrations with toasting glasses, parties, countdowns and fireworks. But have we ever really stopped to ask why we celebrate this way? Or do we just accept the fact that this is the way we've always done it? And when did we stop knowing the meaning behind these traditional celebrations? Over the past couple of decades, Matariki celebrations have been revived as a time of remembrance, joy and peace. So how can we celebrate Matariki today? Matariki allows me to grieve my past, to set intentions for what is to come, and to acknowledge my surroundings of Te Ao Māori. I went to Awananga, the way they spoke about star navigation, that really sparked my love for Matariki and how to incorporate it through my lifestyle. From that day forward, it was like the best, it was better than the Beyonce concert, like it was amazing. Um, and I was looking around in the room and I was like, why am I the only young person here? Traditionally, Māori needed to observe and understand their environment for survival. A tupuna. They relied on matariki as signs of how to get their kai. My dream is for kids to walk outside and understand the natural notifications in our environment. And understanding that, you can know so much more about yourself. I'm not an expert, but I'm just a messenger stick to my peers on the cool as things we have in Te Ao Māori. Hana is trying to modernise Māori traditions to help her generation to understand how the lunar phases can affect our behaviour. We're all just teenagers trying to find our way in life in this 21st century and it can get a bit emotionally high and emotionally low. And I was just trying to help them navigate through those different cycles from a Māori perspective. I created one of these resources to understand Maramataka, which is the Māori lunar calendar, and hope to help them navigate through their mental well-being, their spiritual well-being, and their physical well-being according to the Maramataka phases. For instance, one of our moon phases is Rākau Nui, and in this flip chart book we've got our moon is full, a great time to outgrow comfortable places. Matariki is not just a Māori thing. A lot of different cultures celebrate Matariki in their own way. 
in their own tikanga. My uncle and auntie were the initiators to start celebrating Matariki a few years back. And our first Matariki we had was literally just roasting marshmallows by the fire, and we were talking about different variations of Matariki. The wairua of that night, you can't compare it and I can't explain it. It's just very special, very warming, and that's what Matariki is about. So to me, in my eyes, if you can have your family together, if you can have really nice kai and a celebration of our whakapapa and hitori, that's Matariki to me. To be honest, I don't really know that much about Matariki. I'm half Tongan, and half Scottish. I feel like everyone should learn about Matariki, you know, because it's like part of New Zealand, get an, a better understanding about it, not just like learning it, but understanding it fully, yeah. Does anyone have any knowledge or understanding around Matariki? There's one interpretation that Tafari Matia, who is the god of wind, took out his eyes because of the love of his parents, and his eyes were scattered across the sky, which created Matariki. Matariki being a um, public holiday now is just a way of revitalising um, not only the reo, but just the customs, the tikanga, and um, all of that, and not only just for Māori, but for those who aren't Māori to live in New Zealand and just to kind of make them aware of um, just like the culture as well as the people of the land, so yeah. Does anyone have any idea of how they can celebrate Matariki? Yes. Yeah? You can celebrate it by eating some food? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> One form of celebrating Matariki or a traditional way is called a hautapu. Hautapu in one sense is Throughout the year, you're carrying like an invisible bag. And throughout that year, you're filling it up with baggage. Knowledge, experience, negative, positive. By the time you get to Matariki, it's so heavy. <laughs> it's weighing you down. So Haitapu allows you to empty your baggage out and you're ready to start your new year, okay? My favorite memory with my grandfather was uh, how do I put this nice? He was quite a big fella. And um, I think the one thing that I used to like was just like, I mean, you see him, just give him like the good old hug. Like, since he's like big fella, it was just like, felt real embracing. Yeah. So, probably one of my favourite memory of um, my, me and my grandfather. In terms of sitting with my beliefs, it doesn't really correlate. But that's fine, you know, you, you can always learn new things. So how we celebrate a hautapu is we'll open the space with the karakia. And then we acknowledge by saying the names of people that have passed away in that year. And then we karakia to the different fitu or stars. And in this instance, we will place down an offering that is associated with each star. And so we would place these on our bonfire, right? And the steam from here going up there and saying thank you to the stars for guiding us for the year. And then we karakia, we set our intentions, goals and aspirations to Hiwai Te Rangi. Matariki is a time to let everything go, to stop and reflect on the last year that you've had, all of the ups, all of the downs, and just let everything go and acknowledge everything so that you can fill in even more life experience in the next year. Matariki can help bring our country together so that we can enjoy the best of both worlds. Hey, kia ora, I'm Louis Baker, and this is my song, Rainbow. Said I love you like a rainbow Never let go of you again 
said you love me like the rain And the sound when it hits the room I don't know what I want to do I couldn't be close to you again My skin feels like it's thickening This cold heart of world is sinking We've seen With you I feel But with you I feel free We've come through the darkest shades of blue To a new and brighter point of view Who knows where this rainbow will take us to As long as we're together Said you love me like no other Dulcet tones of Louis Baker there. No, my hooky mai kita fanganui a tara kita papa tongarewa. We hope that our Matariki broadcast is providing you all with more understanding and context around Matariki and how we can all engage in the benefits of recognising Matariki. And that's in the contemplation, the reset, the gratitude, and of course the opportunity to be together. Matariki hunga nui, that brings us together, whether virtually or in person, and then we all feel the lift that that gives our wellbeing. We've had karakia, kōrero kai, and now it's time to kani kani. So we've given thanks, had debate, and enjoyed good food, and now it's time to enjoy great music. And a bit of a boogie. So live from Te Honoki Hawaiki, our whare here at Te Papa, here are the creative natives, karawhiwa mai. Tēnā tātou kohāni dreadahau, ane te creative natives. Ke konga ko himu himu. He tu, he tu, he reta. Ke konga ko himu himu. He tu, he tu, he reta. Panu i ko anti piri na ye ne ye rongo na ye. Kajaki na paiti ye. Kajaki na paiti. Go, him, him, him. 
tyhi, tyhi, detta. Gå himmy, himmy. Tyhi, tyhi, detta. Ma ma ya ke ne ara 
We hope and trust you've really felt the way you do the spirit of this special day that we have brought to you from Te Whanganui Atara, but also has been enjoyed all around the country. We had an incredible start to our day in terms of the hotapu. Hotapu was pretty special indeed. So in terms of what these practices mean, I know that when I was growing up, uh, they actually didn't have a place in our lives. Yeah. I did think that this time of year was special because it's when my birthday is, but then I realised <laughs> that there was something more. And today is all about something more. That answer was always right in front of us. We all have something more when it comes to Matariki. Mm. So in terms of what we have celebrated, we'd like you to take a look at what happened this morning because it was pretty special. I already know that it's holding a place in people's hearts. That was the hautapu that we experienced here at Te Papa this morning. Earlier this morning, we experienced for the first time on a live broadcast the sacred ceremony of Whāngai i Te Hautapu, led by Professor Sir Pau Temara alongside Te Matapunenga, a group of Ruānuku trained experts in karakia incantations to make offerings to each star of the Matariki constellation. <laughs> As part of the Whāngai Te Hautapu ceremony, we see various kai related to some of the stars of Matariki, such as crops from the ground, the sea, the trees, as well as fresh water, cooked and offered to the stars and environment and thanks for the nourishment we've been provided for in the last year. Oh, Each star is being remembered in this ceremony, and we've been reminded of all their properties to bring us together, to acknowledge our environment and all the elements as well as setting our intentions and hopes for the year ahead. Manawatia, Amatariki. Tēnā rā koutou katoa e te iwi e te motu whānui, ngā miho te ngā kou kia koutou, Manawatia, Amatariki. I hope you're all right out there. It was a beautiful, beautiful ceremony this morning. This next waiata is called Waiti Waita. Waiti Waita is a waiata that pertains to the stars of Matariki, Waiti, our fresh waters, and Waita, our ocean waters. May the waters wash and cleanse you. Kia orara, this is Waiti Waita. <laughs> Yeah. 
So love in you. Oh, King of all, King of all. I want to just move. Your pain on my mind. Hey, oh, 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 the 
piringa, o te manawa kokwe te piringa, o te manawa kokwe te piringa, o te manawa kokwe. Oh, te utu o te aroha. It's worth the hurt that we've been through. It's in the stars, it's in the moon, it's the thought of me and you. E rongo nei, e tangi nei, ko te ngā kaumaru. I want you to know, you're still on my mind. E ahara i pene i ai. Oh, te piringa, o te manawa, ko koe te piringa. O te manawa, ko koe te piringa. O te manawa, ko koe. Oh, te piringa, o te manawa, ko koe te piringa. O te manawa, ko koe te piringa. O te manawa, ko koe. Oh, oh, oh. Matariki is important to Te Papa because at the heart of it, it recognises the deep mana, vitality, integrity of Matariki Māori, our indigenous knowledge traditions. I remember not long after Te Papa Tongariwa opened in February 1998, our first iwi in residence was Te Atiawa Taranaki Whanui and the late Tiru Wharehoka. He shared his kōrero and, and his knowledge pertaining to Puanga and the dawning of the Māori New Year. And, uh, it made us think about the significance of, of, uh, of Matariki and consequently uh, took a paper and a, and a kaupapa to our leadership team about why we should be celebrating and acknowledging it. Cliff Whiting, our first kaihautu, it resonated straight away. And within the next two years, we made a commitment uh, that we would celebrate Matariki every year. We've had 24 years of eight different iwi and this um, diversity and perspective of Matariki, Puanga, Maramataka Māori and gathering all of that together, which is sort of eventuated in our digital platform and all the information that we share on our website, Mana Whenua. They're always so generous in letting our iwi exhibition partners from across the mutu share their mātauranga at that time. A highlight for me is the growth that has occurred over the last 20 years. So from when we first started celebrating Matariki at Te Papa, you know, it started as a really small occasion amongst staff and it's grown into this huge program. We've really learned what's worked well, what hasn't worked, and expanding on our learning as kaimahi, but also for our audiences that come into Te Papa. A kaupapa which has been really close to my heart has been the Taikura Kaumatua Kapahaka and uh, we've celebrated that for well over 10 years. The nannies and kuros, so beautiful, really wholesome, and it's just awesome to give them the value that they deserve. That's definitely a Matariki highlight. This is the first time that we've had a physical experience or exhibition for our visitors at Te Papa. Of course, over the years, there's been many learning programs for schools in Kura, many public programs and events, but this is the first time, you know, we're marking it with a physical experience. I think this exhibition is particularly uh, important because it's representing the first Indigenous holiday for Aotearoa. 
It's the first time that, you know, Aotearoa will be pausing for Mataranga Māori and being the National Museum of Aotearoa, it's, it was important to us as an organisation to have something on the floor for our visitors to experience, uh, to help them understand how we should be celebrating this public holiday. My hopes for Te Papa is that now that we've reached this milestone of Matariki being a public holiday, that we can expand on that and um, look at the Maramataka Māori as a whole. And I think it's just kept, sort of trying to keep the momentum up, make sure that we continue to uplift the kaupapa any way we can. I hope that Matariki is taken into every whānau, into every family in Aotearoa. And it's a way that we can understand the history of where we've come from, but just as importantly, as we care for caring for the future, is actually honouring and respecting our whenua, our histories throughout Aotearoa and Rekohu. Man, na watia matariki fano ane ya chair boogeyman chambers mita na wajata. Wajol, wajol. Spiri bara bam bam de bam de bam ba dam bam bam de. Wajol, 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 wajol. Wajol, wajol.
Modi or Kiatato, okay, everyone can celebrate just a little bit. <laughs> Woo! Make some noise. Ereuan the Tengako, and it's been such an uplifting day because the potential and the opportunity of Matariki has been around all of us today. And our wishes to Hiwa Ite Rangi and the recognition of hardship and loss in the last year and in the joy of being together, reflecting together, looking to our environment, our beautiful whenua, and of course, to the stars of Matariki for inspiration. beautiful stays. Nareda. Kua rewa, a e kā napa napa mai ana te kāhui whetu o Matariki, hei arataki a tātou ki te anamata me ona hua katoa. The cluster of Matariki has now risen and glistens above. May it continue to guide and strengthen us all to good health and prosperity in the future and head. On behalf of myself, Mātai Smith, Stacey Morrison and all the team here at Te Papa Tongarewa, thank you so much for joining us. Mānua tia Matariki, celebrate Matariki, hei kona mai rā.